right, go ahead. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us today on Unemployable. We have a special guest with us today, Jeff Thomas. Thanks for joining us today, man. Yo, when I asked Kyla who was coming in next week, she said, oh, it's Jeff Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. N is in Nancy? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I haven't checked, so I don't even know if that's true or if she's covering her tracks. Either way, she said Thomas. Yeah, it would have been. She's, she's gonna she's like, I don't know if he had a weird last name or something. And I'm like screaming at her in front of clients. I'm like, how do you spell Thomas? Disrespect my boy like that. Thomas. 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 <laughs> owner of Fate and Fortune tattoo. Partner oh. owner, yes. And partner owner of Moving Mountains Recovery Center. Yes. <sighs> what the fuck Link do you own, Cam? Nothing. Xbox. A Kia. Game, game Four, cast. Nine. Kia Soul. Gamecast. A lot of people. Damn, Damn dude. That's like That'll give cancer and diabetes. Fucking, yeah. Kylo, small, please. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, so since um, we forgot to hit up Jeff uh, a week prior to remind him that he had the podcast, I hit him up last night <laughs> with the old you up. And I was like, yo, we got a podcast tomorrow. And he just hits me back. He's like, Fuck. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. That's Yo, and this man was in New Jersey hours ago, dude. Hopped on a plane, got down here, scoops him from the airport at midnight, and now he's here. Still be Cam. And I, that Fuck, you yeah. literally <laughs> took away what I was going to say. And somehow fucking Cam, who lives in Florida, is late. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, dude? I don't know, dude. <laughs> <Kinda> crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I call him, mind you. I love the way you answer, like you've been up for an hour. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Just to uh, finish <laughs> reading the paper. <laughs> oh, my bacon's almost done, man. I don't have out. He was like, Dude, it's on the George Foreman I'm stuck grill. Stuck behind a school bus. Right. <laughs> you got to find a different excuse. <laughs> so, what are you doing up in Jersey? Um, like, what do you mean? Like, what am I doing? Just why am I there? Yeah, I guess yeah. however you want to answer that question. <laughs> I feel like that's a loaded question. No, 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 no it's not. Um, so You can tell him about the, the F1 simulator. You can tell Cam. Dude, that's the truth. That's what he's, he's been doing in Jersey. You have an F1 simulator? Yeah, I built an F1 simulator. All right, that's fire. <laughs> it's like kind of the sickest thing ever. It's, it's, it's a little much. You can never act too much. me. She doesn't like it? No, she thinks it's the dumbest thing in the world. She doesn't drive she it? She tried to drive it, and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my she life. She crashed? Oh, my. She couldn't, like... She did, like, okay, but, like, not good. Does it tell you how much money and damage? No, did? but that would be sick. But I was actually reading about it because I was wondering, like, what happens, like... Dude, the tires alone are like twenty. Every time they do a pit stop, it's like twenty seven hundred dollars. Oh wow, it's that's like, actually less than I thought. But that's yeah, but still just a lot. tires, still a lot. you know what yeah. I mean? And, and they do it like multiple times. Right. Like you got to figure like the front wing is like twelve thousand yeah. dollars or something. It's like I don't know because I, I know most crashes are like half a mil. That's like insane to me. Yeah. Like I can't even. And you're just like. Frr! Dude, it's kind of nuts. I didn't know there was only 20 drivers in the world. 20 what? There's 20 Formula One drivers. Right, right, right. That's it. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Well, they just, because they do two per team, there's no backup, and that's that. Yeah, there's no, like, other league, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, Or there's, like, Formula Two, but, like, that's for, like, like people that are coming up, and if you don't make it past that, then Well, isn't there loser. three, four? Yeah, but, like, dude, like, no e. one cares about that, you know? But yeah, like, and when they're younger, and then the go-karts. But, yeah, F1... Dude, it's nuts. It's kind of sick. Um, so New Jersey. So I, I was. So I lived down here forever, right? So I, I are we filming? Are we filming? Yep. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> we were yeah. having a conversation. We are. Uh, That's podcast. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm new to the whole podcast thing. I mean, I listen to them sometimes, but. Um. So, so I, I've been in recovery and I've been sober for over 10 years now. So I lived down here and I worked kind of like in like the substance use treatment like field for a long time and, and, and I got kind of burnt out and, and that's actually how I got into tattooing. So I started tattooing 
And then I tattooed for a while and this opportunity came, came up with a really close friend of mine, my buddy Miles, um, who I grew up with. And we, he came to me and was like, well, actually I, I was with him and we were at like a, a, a close mutual friend passed away and we were at like a memorial or like celebration of life. And, and we just started talking and he was like, yo, like I really want to do something and, um, I'd love to do it in our hometown. And I was like, okay, um, like kind of just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like miles, like if you know him, like he's like the type of dude who's just like, he's kind of like everywhere at once. Like he's got a million ideas and it's like, you know, he'll mention like all these bright ideas. Like, but the thing about him is that he's the kind of person that makes it happen. Like one, one week, for example, one week I was talking to him, he was like, I'm going to start gold mining. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, Are you okay. And like, yeah, bought this. They bought hat. a plot of fucking land, dude, in Alaska and a bunch of mining shit. And he moved to Alaska, to Nome, Alaska. I don't know if you know where that is. It's like, you in, know, it's like in, it's like basically in Russia. It's like <laughs> so far up. It's like, it's like you can like see. It's like, did wild. he find gold? Yeah, he came. Yeah, it was gold mining, dude. Like he nuggets? like met this guy who's who uh, this kid, Josh, and like, Josh is like kind of like a big ogre guy. Yeah. And he's, he like befriended Josh and they built this like gold mining business. And then I think Josh kind of like went off the deep end and Miles, Miles, I think got tired of gold mining in Alaska. <laughs> but anyway, so, so that's just like a background on like the Did kind of Did he have like, a pitchfork or not a pitchfork? Um, axe. Yeah. Pitchaxe. Like a, like a pickaxe. Pickaxe. Yeah. He's not like a <coughs> goblin, like mining in a, in a That's mine. That's how I feel like That's you should start. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go right to like the machinery. heavy machinery. No, you, no, need you to, gotta go like that Like a way. cart and a... You have to become cars. one of the seven dwarves. Yeah, you gotta whistle and shit. Yeah. He came back with this walrus dick bone. It's crazy. And, and he told me that, that apparently, like, I guess, like, I don't know if you're supposed to say Eskimo. Is Eskimo not an okay thing to say? We don't care. Like Native American? Uh, like Indian and Native American? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you're going, that's a slippery slope. You're, I'm not saying that. No, 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 no. No, he said that these, like, Alaskan natives, apparently, like, they're really, like, aggressive, and it's, like, really violent there, and, like, apparently, like, some guy got, like, beaten to death with this walrus stick bone. Wow. Yeah, pretty, pretty unique. Things probably Wait, more. you, whoa, 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 you, Danny, you can't, Eskimo is offensive? Not I think I've heard it before. Though. <laughs> I've heard brothers. that it could be an offensive term to some people. I don't, who? I who have you heard? The Alaskans. <laughs> Why you went there? You, you were with like, Miles? I, I don't know, dude. Trucker I, show. I just like don't want to say anything that's gonna like. I don't know. You know all I know okay, is that walrus dick bone was probably Jeez. worth more than all the gold. Is that like the most offensive thing well, you he, can call a Alaskan snow person? Sea a snow person, <laughs> seal Jeez. people. I think. Which is well, bad. he came back dude. with this like little vial of gold, and it was like this big. It's probably like a few grams of gold. And I was like, dude, you just like lived in the fucking wilderness, in the snow, cold, miserable, like whatever, for this little bit of gold. I was like, dude, like. <laughs> You can't even make a fucking bracelet out of that. He's like, but I got these he? sick grills now. <laughs> <laughs> and this ball is worth dick. it. Did he like get the gold flake and like melt it down? Or did he find like whole nuggets? No, it's like gold flakes. It's like a bunch yeah. of gold flakes. It looks like some fucking yeah. person sifted them out through like <laughs> a, a river. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with one of those things, like when you're a kid and you go to the. Whatever. Oh, I know. But anyway, so. I watched that Netflix. So that's show. an example of the kind of person my business partner one of my business partners is so he's like whatever so we're talking at the celebration of life and he's like yeah i want to do this thing and i'm kind of just like okay 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 and then i um our investor was there too and i met him and we were talking and and, and this guy you know is it's also in long-term recovery and, and and you know he really showed an interest in wanting to do it so they wanted to build this treatment facility and something different like both Miles and I are really into like adventure sports. Like I love rock climbing. Miles is like a base jumper. He's like a nutcase. So like and, and skydive instructor and like snowboard paramedic. So he wanted to build this like adventure kind of program that wasn't like completely wilderness based, but it was like different. So yeah. we we got together and he was like, all right, and and pretty much it was like, all right, like put together a plan. So I went home and I thought about it and I was like, well, you know, what the hell? It's like worth a shot to try to put this on paper and see if it's feasible. And so like for the next two weeks, I kind of grinded out a business plan and put together, you know, everything that I needed to, to kind of present the idea. And like fast forward now, it's 
been like three years since since that kind of conversation happened and we've been open for a year and we opened a treatment facility in my hometown so that's why i moved up to uh new jersey but um and that's where you're from is jersey right yeah 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 i'm from new jersey from not too far away from where you're from i actually have a really like funny memory of the first time i met john nelson Ooh, get, get I it would up. love to hear this. So <laughs> I was what you would consider troubled youth. Um, like when we were kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was considered like troubled, <laughs> a troubled kid. And uh, I used to, you know, like many other troubled kids, I used to go to the skate park like every day. Like I, I pretty much found my life at the skate park. Like that's where I made my friends. That's where I learned how to smoke pot. That's where I fucking, you know, tried to make out with girls. Like that's what I did. I went to the skate park and I met John at the skate park. I don't know if you remember this. You probably don't. Because you probably met like a hundred <laughs> people. No, he wasn't skateboarding. He was, was, like a, he was he an art kid though. He, he like skating. did graffiti and stuff. Like I remember that. Um, I want to say it was with James Kaplan. Probably. Yeah, I yeah. want to say that. Rest in peace. Shout out to the homie. Um, but I met I met John there, and I I just all I I can't really say much more than that. But I remember smoking like smoking weed with John on the Randolph trails. Like that's that's when I met John. We were probably like I don't know, thirteen, something like that. Cam's age. Yeah, probably like Cam's age, maybe a little older. <laughs> that skate park was sick. It was like a half hour from me, so especially young, at a young age, like when I could convince my parents to drive me there and drop me off for the day, it was like the best fucking feeling ever. Because I knew I was going to get to skate, talk to chicks, and smoke pot. Yeah. And what more? What more could <laughs> what you, more you want? What more do you want as a 13-year-old? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. In that order? You know? It was more like smoke pot. Now I'm so high I can't skate. <laughs> Try and to say talk weird to things to girls. <laughs> yeah. um, you had the scene haircut too. Yeah, Oof. really long. Let's go. Cool. I'll put it in the podcast. Show, show Party in We the saw sun. some of those old fixtures. They're fire, dude. Right. They're good, dude. Chicks loved it. They probably did. Yeah. You would probably think that he was. Boys like girls. You'd probably <laughs> fuck me, Cam. <laughs> or want to, at least. <laughs> Shout out to Greg. <laughs> <laughs> For real. So you did all this with the treatment center, like, also owning a tattoo shop. Yeah, so um, that's a really incredible kind of story, too. So I apprenticed at this shop, this, like, a big shop. and In f- Florida? In Florida. Yeah, yeah so I, pr- I apprenticed at a shop. And, um, I don't know, dude, like, here's the thing. It was kind of crazy. Cause I was making like a good living, um, doing what I was doing for work, but I was just fucking miserable. Like I just right. like hated my life and I was just like, dude, this sucks. And, uh, I was always like kind of into the tattoo culture and I, I was really like, you were doing treatment before. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Working for someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so I was just working in the treatment industry yeah. and it was just like kind of burning me out and I was like tired of it. But like. I um, I was like, I, I was always into tattoo culture and I was getting tattooed one day and, and you know, I grew up doing like art and like, you know, like street art, stuff like that. And um, I was talking to the guy who was tattooing me and I was just asking like just basic questions. I was just like, I don't want to be like, can I have an apprenticeship? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like now in hindsight, it's like cringy, but I didn't, I didn't do that. And I, I just kind of, um talk to him about how he got into tattooing and whatever. And he was talking about like portfolio and this and that. So I went home and like, dude, I was so like that, de- like desperate to like do something different with my life that I, uh, I stayed up till like four in the morning, like every, every night for like two weeks and, um, and put a portfolio together. Like I just started drawing like crazy. And like, I literally, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like four or five in the morning, two, three weeks. I was just staying up late, just drawing, drawing, drawing. And I put together a portfolio out of nothing. And I... Was it good? No, dude, it was terrible. <laughs> I mean, it was okay, but like it was... It was it, it, like, it was good enough. It was good enough, yeah, right. whatever. But like it was like like now in hindsight, like there's like two drawings in there that I'm like, that's kind of sick. But like the <laughs> yeah. rest of it... Damn, um, that's just fine. Yeah, I'm like, dude, that's kind of that. sick. But the rest of it, I'm like, it's just like... Do you still have it? Yeah. Where? 
I don't know. I'd have to track it down. But it's like, either, can you get pictures of it from Rachel? Does she have it? Yeah, I can probably. I, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry, about it. <laughs> <laughs> dude. I'm not. I'm not giving you material to roast me. Um, <laughs> no, but so I put this thing together, and I and I and I the the shop that I was getting tattooed at. I like. I had a friend who like the guy who owned it like booked his band. So I was like, yo, put in a word for me. And, and he, he like emailed me and was like, yo, you want to come in for an interview, whatever. And, and I was like, I thought I was like, the, I was like, I made it. Like I didn't even like get an apprenticeship yet. Yeah. I just like, you know, got the opportunity to try to shoot my shot. Quit your job. Talk down to everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm a fucking, I'm going to be a tattoo artist. Right. <laughs> I'm a rock star now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't hang this. out with you guys anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're fucking up my image. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I went for this interview and whatever and just like said whatever I had to say. And then I, I, I went on another interview with like, because there's like a shop that was like owned by a bunch of other shops and like, or owned a bunch of other shops. So I went to the interview with, um, with who, who, turns out to be one of my best friends and now my business partner her name's mel perlman and she's a fantastic tattooer and i and i went and i i interviewed with her and this other guy joe and um and yeah and and you know and and they hired me they gave me a shot and uh, what was that feeling like when they gave me a shot so yeah. I, I well they didn't tell me like during the meeting they were just like they were like you know like all right we'll call you and whatever and i actually I was playing in a band and my band played a show at respectables in West Palm. Yeah. Like it was like a sold out show. It was like a big show. And the guy who I interviewed with originally who owned everything or like one of the main owners, he was actually booking that show. So he came up to me. So I just, I played a set. So how I found out that I got the job or got the apprenticeship was I played a set. It was packed. We had a great turnout. The show was sick. And then after the show, I was packing my stuff up and he was like, yo, you did awesome. Like, so I was already like coming off of like the high of like, playing show and doing yeah. well. And then he, he was like, yo, I just wanted to pull you aside and tell you like you got the apprenticeship. So it was like a really cool day for me. Like I what felt- do you go do an encore after that? I might as well. Like, Fuck <laughs> it guys. We're going back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, so I find out that I got it and I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm on top of the world. Right. <laughs> you know, dude, little did I know, like I was just getting into like the worst, like nightmare year of like hell and hard work and right. blood and sweat and but tears. Listen, it's perspective, man. Yeah, you, you didn't know that. Yeah, you I thought no it was idea. fucking great. Dude, I was dude. like, I was like, I'm gonna be a tatter guy. Yeah, dude. Little so did you know that was the last good day of your. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Little did I know I was gonna be like treated like, nah. Well, like to be honest, like I wasn't treated like completely terrible throughout my apprenticeship, but like it wasn't like I I worked like it was Bro, work. Leave it to tattooers to create a position where not only do you make zero dollars the whole time, but you get physically mentally abused you work more than anyone else <laughs> leave it to the tattooers to convince people to be excited about that you know? seriously dude i'm gonna give you a shot yeah, yeah. but you gotta work we'll for see it. no promises <laughs> right 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 so, my cry once or twice dude, so, so so what's crazy though is that now so like just just to paint the picture so and i'll get we can talk more about the apprenticeship stuff because i think that's like kind of funny and like yeah it's you hysterical. know but fast forward now it's like four or five years or something later and i'm now business partners with one of the people that um taught me how to tattoo which yeah. is like a really cool thing like me and mel made like a built like a really really strong friendship and a bond and she really helped me a lot you know joe helped me a lot too when i was learning to tattoo but you know Joe, like, I don't know, we, we, we didn't really mesh and bond, like, like, uh, we did a little bit, but we kind of had a falling out towards the end. Um, but me and Mel, like, stayed in touch, like, f for a long time, and I, um, and yeah, so, like, now we're partners, so me, Mel Perlman, Matt Perlman, who's her husband, who's a fantastic tour, a tattooer, too, um, and then my wife, Rachel, <coughs> came together, and we, we, we built the shop. And so Rachel does all of like the back end, the bookkeeping, like she does all of yeah. our financials. And then Mel and Matt do the day to day. I do like the, the marketing and I do like, um, you know, some of the back end stuff like insurance and, yeah. and whatever. But, but yeah, dude, it's, it's pretty sick. So we built this shop and we have, uh, it's called fate and fortune tattoo. We're in Boynton beach and, uh, we have a fantastic team of artists and like we have a great group of people and we have like a culture that I fucking love. So yeah. it's pretty cool and unique. No, it sounds like a cool team effort and, and 
I mean, it is a great shop, amazing shop. I like that it's like big. There's a lot of similarities. I feel like between your shop and mine. Uh, so but we've got to, you know, talk about that in the past and fuck yeah, dude. I think it's cool that you have the ability to own, be part of a team that runs a shop and then also open other businesses. And I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that because there's always like, as a tattooer, there's always that kind of question in the back of your head or, you know, when you're not like a child tattooer anymore and you grow up it'll come where you're like, I can't tattoo forever. You know, like what is the retirement plan? What's the end goal? Like, do I have any like backups going on? And I think it's important to explore that stuff. Maybe not as big as like a treatment center, but it could be, you know, as little as like, yo, I'm going to sell some clothing, sell some t-shirts, you know, sell print, sell artwork on the side, just anything like i'm always impressed when i see artists here or around like starting side projects because most not all the time but most of the time it's like as tattooers you know we're not necessarily starting our day until you know 11 12 even one o'clock sometimes right. and we have this entire period of the day to like work on other stuff i know when i was younger i chose to use that time for just sleeping in really late but then, you know, you get up, you start creating and doing different things. So was it difficult, like, having a business already and then trying to start another business? It was challenging, but you know what? I have to say that I couldn't have done it without my partners. Like, my partners are amazing people. Yeah. They understood, like, you know, when I came into this, I said, hey, like, this is a project that I'm working on. Because, like, I had already, before I even went into building the shop, I was already working on moving mountains, which is a treatment center. And, um, and I was really straight up with them and I was like, look, like I'm going to be doing this also. And, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to be spreading myself a little thin, but, um, but I want to be a part of this and I, I don't want to contribute. I want to do it. So my, my partner, I couldn't do it without them, you know, like they're amazing. Um, both Mel and Matt and Rachel, you know, they, they, they really carry a lot of weight sometimes. And, and that's, that's a big, big relief and, and, and it means the world to me, you know? So I think that it's, it was tough in the beginning, but I also was still living here for a majority of like the beginning of that. So like I was still, um, you know, I was present at the shop every day, whatever. Now it's a little bit different cause I come for about a week, a month or, 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 you know, whatever. And I tattoo and I work in the shop, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it wasn't without their support that I could have done it. Right. You know? And I think, cause, cause here's the thing it's like, dude, like you, you can't be a million places at once. I know like we've talked about like stuff like this, like it's, it's hard to manage. It's like overwhelming when you have a lot of moving parts, but like having the right people in your corner and the people to support you, like that's really how it makes it possible. hundred percent. And I think you can kind of relate cause you just, you know, started working with Alex, yeah. you know, for bookings and it kind of, I mean, you're getting a lot more accomplished. Yeah. Because you're not doing it alone. No, yeah, for sure. The team always makes everything better. Absolutely. Good support group. Like, like working with people you trust. Absolutely. Like Alex is like my boy, you know, giving him an opportunity to make some money. I mean, you're doing more tattoos. Your numbers went up. Yeah, numbers looked good this week. I mean, we couldn't do any of this shit without the team here. <coughs> you know, at yeah. borrowed time. We're built on all of that. Yeah. It's super essential for success, in my opinion. A good strong team around you. It's hard to do everything by yourself. Yeah, Yo, you look so tired. Do you got to drink that this. that girly coffee? Yeah, I didn't get a thing. I didn't get a straw though. Oh, make it work, babe. <laughs> what's going What's going on, Cam? Severe depression. <laughs> Bro, I just said, I just said never that. Went up and depression. Bro, I can see in his eyes. He's like. <laughs> Don't ask me. With his eyes. What's up, dude? How was your Sunday? This it was alright. I didn't get as much rest as I wanted to. Dude, I had no Wi-Fi yesterday in my house. No Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi. Why? Sounds terrible. Huh? You killed it. It was horrible. You can play Fortnite. No Fortnite. Yeah. What are you a cave person? <laughs> I can't. I can't fuck around on my iPad. Dude, you be on Fortnite. I love Fortnite. I, I, I be on Fortnite sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna add you. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're like. On a talking thing right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yo, Fortnite's sick. You should play. Bro, I can't play video games, bro. I have too much to do. <laughs> I can play like I one, make time. 
one game on my phone. That's it. Brawl you Stars. Play phone games? Brawl, Brawl Stars. Stars. Well, I don't even know what that is. I know. I dabble. <laughs> I just don't have time for video games. I'll get like way too sucked in, and I will make time. But there's only <laughs> one spot in my schedule that I can realistically cut out, and that's sleep. <laughs> Fortnite is a good sacrifice. For that. Yeah, I don't know, dude. But Sound, sounds like an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might be right. I love video yeah, games. Yeah, but I, I like barely sleep. Like, I don't want to say I barely sleep, but like, dude, I I have like a really unhealthy sleep schedule. So like I sleep like five hours a night and like that's like a, that's like a good night for me. Yeah. Five is not enough for me. Six, six and a half is like perfect. Anything over that, I'm too like tired when I wake Froggy. up. Right. Yeah. But six is fine. 5.30, I'm like, uh, shouldn't have gone to the casino, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Played Pie Gal with Pie Gal Paul. Right. <laughs> right. We've been trying to get Cam, like, more involved in the podcast. <laughs> I thought you were going to say gambling. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say we're trying have to get Cam. Have you gone gambling with us before? No. Oh, I no, make smart you choices. you need money to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes, <sighs> checks out. Dude, we... But we now should... with Alex, like, you had a good week last week. Yeah. You yeah. should do a video like a segment where like we like pitch in money and give it to Cam and like follow him at the casino and just see what he does. Dude, I would love to do like more on our channel or another channel where we're like filming outside the shop. I just like don't <laughs> we don't have time right. to do it. Yeah. There's so many like ideas. You gotta cut your to sleep, do. dude. Bro, I'm like there's just like constant like ideas. Like I would was getting a massage yesterday. It's supposed to be like a quiet time. <laughs> Must be nice. You know, they do the music and whatever. You're just that's in like your th thoughts the whole Yeah, that's like a time. thing. Like, I'll try to do on Sundays with my girl and, wh and whatever. It's just like all these thoughts it's are like coming strong, in, dude. dude. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Your boy hooking it up. So, like, I was telling you, like, going around raiding tattoo shops, giving them Michelin stars. That would be fucking sick. Right. Traveling around the country or around the world. You're going to get tattooed by every shop that you go to? or Yeah, bro. Like that Where? guy, like the, one, <laughs> like the one bite thing. You know, mm -hmm. everyone knows Forced the rules. One tat, you know? Yeah. One tat, but what, what about when you run out of space? Are you going to bring Cam and just make him do it? Yeah, like after I'm covered or we do blast overs, whatever, bro. <laughs> just start stacking them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You give someone like this like small space and you're like... Do a fucking yeah, three like, star Michelin yeah, tag. I want, I want a portrait. <laughs> three stars or busts. That's right. Yeah. Wait, isn't three stars the top? Not as, not as good as one? one no, star? three no. stars no. is the best. Yeah. best. Two is like somewhere in the middle. It's usually, you know, if you're like a famous chef, one is like you just got it. Typically, I search for like the one star rep restaurants because they're trying the hardest. Have you ever eaten at a three star? <laughs> No, but we've been trying to get a reservation at the French Laundry for the last four fucking months. I'm, like, on there trying to get a reservation. Trying to land I'm it. I'm just going to call Amex and be like, get me one, right, you know? Happened. But I thought I could do it because I have experience with, like, the shoe drops and stuff. But literally last <laughs> month, Kyla and I were on, it like, three different phones. And I think we were at checkout in 20 seconds, and they were sold out. Of reservations for how long? For two months. That's crazy. Shit. It's probably so sick. I mean, I've been to one star. I've been to a bunch of like one star like sushi. Like I'm like a sushi connoisseur. Like I go in. And, I was in the city on Friday. Like yeah. and, and literally, I was in Manhattan, and and we have a couple like sushi spots that we really love. And uh, you know, some of them. It's not always. You know what I found is like it's not always the Michelin stars that I like the best. Like, but I have been to like a few like Michelin stars, and it's always like a cool. The service is like a cool experience. Yeah, they just started giving them out in Miami, and I'll be honest, I don't even like to say that. We went to the Stubborn Seed uh, in Miami, and it really, like, wasn't that good. Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, what kind it, of food It's is just that? they got a star. Um, the presentation, the food was there. Because, like, okay, you're in, you know, you're in the Michelin realm. Like, it's different now. Right. It's not, you're not just able to be, like, a really good restaurant. Like, it's practically theater at this point. Like, it's supposed to be from the moment you walk in to the moment you leave. You're it's like the experience. experience. Right. right. It's one of the things they're essentially graded on. And there's, like, little things that you should expect. Like, for example, if we're at, like, a four-person table and, like, you're pouring sauce, you two get poured at the same time, and then they switch, and then us get poured at the same time. These are things right? you think about? Yeah. 
And they didn't do that. They were like off, like poured here, poured there, whatever. Pour my sauce correctly. <laughs> yeah, bro. But it's like, it's like cool. Like you claim Michelin. You're in fucking. See, I didn't know the sauce rule. Like I didn't. That's, <laughs> that's one of like many. <laughs> it's just an interesting rule that you chose to. It clearly bothers you. So yeah. I just find it fascinating. So, well, any pour, like when they do the, the drink pours, you know. I'm going to say supposed to be on really your cool. right. Rotation. Yeah, whatever. They didn't do any of that. They were all so coked up. It was like, I could see it, which is fine. Like, I like fast work, but <laughs> I like, like, just like be re- polite. Like, if you're going to do coke, don't like literally wear it on your face. Just like do it. I try to hide it a little bit. Like do a respectable amount and then come out. Like if you did too much by accident. Like, wait it off for 10 minutes before you, like, come in front of your guests. Like, be an adult about it, you right. know? Uh, whatever. The food was amazing. I left hungry, though. I think it was only a six- or eight-course meal. And, like, you know, it's, like, one bite. I think three of the courses were literally one bite. They did have a caviar macaroon. That was fire. Caviar macaroon. Yeah. It was, like, you got the sweet first and then the salty of the caviar. But whatever, it's like, it's a new thing, it, giving out the stars in Miami, and hopefully we'll see, like, some improvements, but there's just, for me, there's, like, a level of expectation or standard that comes when I see you have a star, especially for a restaurant like that, that their whole advertising marketing pitch is that they have the star. Right. Like, a lot of stars I've been to in other countries it's almost like they have their like plaque, but it's just kind of dusty and it's off by the side. They're almost like, yeah, whatever. We don't care about that. Like, right. we're too busy Here is focusing like a marketing on thing. the restaurant, right? To care, like, and then this place, it's like, look, we have a star. <laughs> Everyone, look, we got it. Yeah. We're the best, number one. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to go into an accent, and I was like, don't do that. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So I'll eat a, I'll so eat a think- fucking pub sub and be happy. Fuck your star. Huh? Fuck your star. Pub Cam, you got to yeah, grow up sometimes. I'll eat a pub <laughs> sub. <laughs> Listen, I do miss a good pub Cam sub, Cam wants to though. give Publix a star. I think they have rubber. They get one. <laughs> just like, based bro, off the, the experience. You ever waited in that waiting line, bro? In line? <laughs> that cold ass deli. <laughs> Google reviews. Yo, it has three stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight. Um, Would you do that with me? Would you travel around the country raiding tattoo shops? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? Yeah. Would you be a tough critic? <coughs> Cam would give everyone a star. No. I would yeah. not give everyone a star. Me neither. I'd be I so would, stingy. Me about too. It. Yeah, like, you don't deserve this. You Yo, what is this yeah, guy would, doing with this net? It would make people know, s- pool stuff. There's it a m- pool here? Above us. Yeah, there's a you pool. You have a pool bar with time? Yeah. Damn. Sheesh. That's right. Yo, you heard it here first. Rooftop, Sam's not rooftop in access. Without his floaties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very strict about that. And there's no running. No running. <laughs> no, no running. Absolutely none. Well, uh, that's just responsible. Yeah, yeah, and you have to wait after you eat. 15 minutes. And, and he dives a, head first and forth. Does it have the water. die, the pee die? Around 3 o'clock, there's an adult swim. Yeah. <laughs> no apprentices in the pool after 3. <laughs> you have apprentices? Um, no, I don't think right now. Or actually, yeah, we do. We do um, <laughs> have an apprentice now. Um, my... My good homie, actually, uh, my buddy Dan, he's an apprentice now. And it's different, though, because he didn't, like, come and, like, come to the shop and be like, can I get an apprenticeship or whatever? <laughs> Dan actually worked counter for us for years. Like, oh, okay. Years. Yeah, yeah. And he never asked, never. And then one day he was just, like, started drawing. Like, we were bullshitting and talking. And I was like, dude, why don't you, like, you know, whatever. Like, he just started drawing, like, like, um, like traditional stuff. And, and his drawing started to get better and better. And he never even asked. And we uh, kind of approached him and we were like, yo, like, have you considered, like, he's been with us, like, we love him. Like, he's a hard worker. He grinds. He keeps the shop clean. He answers the phone. He gets the orders done. So he knows how the shop operates already. And we were kind of like, you know, like, you want to give it a shot? But, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how. And then we What had did he say? Yeah, he was, like, stoked <laughs> on it. He was like, yes, yeah. you never ask. He's been, tra- he's been 
trying to he's a long game player yeah. yeah yeah he did it honestly i think that's like a really respectable way to do it you know yeah i mean you you build the trust you show that you know you have the hard work you're already familiar with how the shop operates uh how could you fail yeah i mean the artwork i guess is the only way like if he sucked at art but he's right. good at art yeah, he's getting he's getting like he's getting much better. I mean, he's really gearing towards like the traditional stuff, which is like a lot of what I do, and right. and uh, you know he kind of floats in that in that area, and and I think it's a good starting point to kind of find your way for a lot of people. But it depends on what you know. I don't, I'm I I think that's the direction that he wants to go. You know, do you still do the funny tattoos a lot, like the joke tattoos? Yeah, I, yeah. occasionally I get like, yeah, I get to do some like. I feel like for a little bit, like if someone wanted a funny, inappropriate like traditional tattoo they went to you yeah like i did a, like i had like a period of time where i was doing like tattoo tattoos of dicks like yeah. not tattoo like not dick tattoo ta not you know on I mean? the dick not on the, dick. the dick i would but i, I right yeah. would you tattoo a dick yeah 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 it's, it's it, part yeah. of the job i thought he was gonna be weird about it yeah. you should charge so when charge can i schedule my appointment you trust right him after to this tattoo podcast. Your dick? What? You trust him to tattoo your dick? No. I don't I won't even let him tattoo the rest of my body. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. It's tough out here. I don't think I'd want to get my dick tattooed. <sighs> I'm I don't that. know if I can say this, but Lahal has his dick tattooed. Really? Yeah, he's a castle on it. I didn't get to see it. Did I'm you do it? it? No, I, I wish, bro. A it's, lot of people saw it. I have my balls tattooed. It's fucking sick. You have your balls tattooed? That's right. Yeah. Can what? you guess what it is? If you guess it right, I'll give you hundred dollars. Fuck. Can I one jump guess. in on this? Give Stop. Me like Just guess. You're not gonna get it. I wouldn't offer you money if I thought you could get it. <sighs> I'm, I'm like, just guess something. Fucking soccer ball. You think I, I would know. get a soccer ball? In my <laughs> <laughs> like like you a bunch of little hexagon. Yeah, just a bunch of black hexagons. <laughs> that'd be kind of. That'd be kind of cool. Can I take a guess? <laughs> Is it like the dice you hold from like the rearview mirror? No, that's, that's a, a good one guess. too. Like if you did the string over the dick. Yeah. Oh, and they're like, dick. <laughs> what? Dude. Okay. You've seen balls? A no. A snake. Ball? You, you get balls? that on the shaft. Balls? Yeah, you fucking idiot. Oh. That's how you know she's not. You know what, person, bro? You can't guess anymore. No, it's not a peace sign. A peace what sign? The fuck Why do you? I think it'd be cool if it was like an astronaut helmet. Almost like, it's like Logan. You want to guess? Someone asked me the other day to do a to do a a, a Death Star on their yes. ball, like, on their Whoa. on their nutsack, and I said yeah, but I I, I he tried to lowball me on the price. And I was like, <laughs> no pun intended. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 and I was just like, yeah, dude, like I don't care. Like I'll hold your balls and tattoo them. I really right. don't care at all. But like. It's a it's like a pain in the ass to tattoo like someone's balls like it's yeah. like just it's more work it's like a little more stressful like, like moving their dick out the yeah, way yeah like, like you know like I'm not gonna do and I, I didn't even quote him like a lot of money but like you know I was like six hundred bucks yeah you know like no nah, everyone kind of like I think you're supposed to tax it a little yeah. bit yeah yeah dude you know yeah. like Ricky tattooed a couple dicks and yo he's just he like gets a thousand bucks yeah he'll get him you know? he'll get him too yeah but I always think it's funny because like Seth has his gooch tattooed and like plenty of friends have like private areas tattooed and whenever it's brought up in a conversation to someone that doesn't know at least in my experience they're always like oh does that mean like someone touched your dick oh, <laughs> yeah 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 does that mean yeah. like someone touch your balls it's like yeah you fucking idiot <laughs> what, how, you think, how do you think i think use the there? force bro <laughs> <laughs> like fucking death star maybe yeah <laughs> yeah like no like that's always like one of the next questions yeah, people or like did like, it hurt or was it flaccid or hard right yeah that's a big debate people, people are, are always like conversation. If your balls are flaccid or hard, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like did it hurt? obviously like, they're hard. Were, was, like, were they bricked up, like, dude? Yeah, it, it hurt. It wasn't yeah. like it wasn't sick. Like I right. don't know what to say. It's like no, actually, that's the one place on your body it doesn't hurt. Like, uh, uh, did, did they touch it and did it hurt? It's like yeah. oh, I'm gonna hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So All right, wait, what, what do you have? have? What? A, what? Is no, he, he said he said the, the mirror the dice. dice. That's yeah. pretty good. Do you have a portrait of Cam's mom and dad? <laughs> that would be sick. That would be, be sick pretty to see sick. See what his dad looks like. Yeah, and then just like every forever, your dick is just on the. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sick. Uh, no, I have a I have a Louis bag. Wow. Yeah, it's a Louis. It's that. a Louis Vuitton. It's like a coin. It's like purse. the monograms across the bottom, yeah. and it has an LV. How well did that hold? It actually held up pretty well. It needs a touch up if you want to do it. I got you. <laughs> All right, cool. 
Did you get take the, the experience. skin and like pull the skin out like on a table? Well, so we tried it a bunch of different ways, right? Like we tried like stretching it. You're just like laughing whatever. the whole time. Oh, hundred well, percent the entire time. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you. I'll find. I have like a. I have a picture of like a like a Polaroid. I think of like it happening. Yeah, and it's hilarious. But no, we tried a million different ways, and then we ended up just the brain. Yeah, just brain. Yeah, got a brain, dude. It's the only oh, way the skin. It. Yeah, skin would but get. But when stretched. it's like relaxed, does it look decent? Yeah, it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and it's stenciled. All over? It was stenciled. No, no, no. It's just it's the three monograms and then the LV in the middle. So it's like on the bottom of the ball, kind of like the front or bottom. under the dick. Kind of like like the you front have to bottom. lift the dick to see it. Yeah. Honestly, like no one really knows this. Like I don't. I'm doing it. This is you guys are like probably exclusive information. Yeah, this is like you got it out of me. You got it out of me. Um. But what we're oh we were talking about funny tattoos. Yeah, there was a period of time where I was doing like lots of like dick tattoos like tattoos of dicks and like yeah and um you know like snake pit-esque kind of stuff a goal of mine was to get on snake pit for a while really yeah you didn't do it i think i did but it's been that was a, like a long time ago i just thought it'd be funny because I, I noticed like if you did a f an absurd or like funny tattoo but even if you did it well like you could get up there and i was like oh cool like i have a chance because mm -hmm. i didn't want to like just do a purposely like garbage tat to end up there. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, like would the have. wave of bad. I got on there. I actually like. You were I, on there a couple times, right? Yeah, yeah. I got one time. I I think no, I think just once. But the one I did like did really well. Like it was really it was good. It was you did funny. the cum dumpster one, right? No, that didn't get on. I don't think that. Maybe it did. Yeah. Uh, but I did a cum dumpster that was sick. But no, I did the corn dick. It was like a dick, uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. corn on the cob that yeah. turned into a dick that's coming pop buttered popcorn. Ooh! All right, like, for those who are not aware of what Snake Pit is, Cam, explain it. Snake Pit's an Instagram account that posts funny tattoos, typically like lewd. things normal people wouldn't get. Yeah, gotcha. asking for Logan. It's either yeah. that or like really bad tattoos or like people tattooing with yeah. their gloves on, yeah. like really yeah. like gross shit. Like, like it's either. But I like, like like the well done. Oh yeah, like the sucky panther movement. Like if I, I did a sucky panther like yeah. a couple months ago. If I see a cool like crazy clean sucky panther, I'm like that's fucking sick. Yeah. I don't like the sucky panther, dude. I have that. I don't think like I, I love him really. I think yeah. it's like hilarious, and dude. I, I know, like I know it's like an for Seth. ironic. I drew that cause one for Seth. He still hasn't gotten it. There's these little subgroups that develop in the tattoo world, and that's one of them. And sometimes I'm just not on board. I don't like, like hate what's on another it. subgroup. Uh, well, it used to be like black uh, blackouts. Now it's a thing now, you know. But like when I got my black arm like ten years ago, that was like a weird little group of people. Right. At least here in the U.S. Um. And we'll see, like, different trends. Like, we'll also see, like, the on-purpose garbage tattoos. Yeah, that's a weird one. I can't get behind yeah. it. And now it's, like, the little tribal. What's that called? That's cyber sigilism shit. Right, cyber, cyber. sigilism. It's, like, it's thin, like really it's thin, thin tribal. Like, you know, seen temporary it? tattoos. Dude, honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to controvers controversially say tribal is kind of sick, dude. Oh, <laughs> low key, low key. If someone has, well, I'm like not, listen, 90s, like, yeah, spike yeah, tribal. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like dude, Bill Goldberg's dude, fucking thing, tramp here? stamp, tribal tramp yeah. stamp on a man, sick, Woo. dude, sick. sick. That's like, it's like, a heart in the it's like vintage, it. it's like yeah. vintage. Yeah, that's how I feel. Right. But like, Hard I will wire. say that you know what, you know what, I think is the new tribal, what mandalas, yeah, Ooh. that's the tribal of our, our generation, agreed, yeah. Because people will just do a whole lot Like, you're going to see people with mandalas, like, 20 years from now, and you're going to be like, you got that in, like, between 2010 and 2000. <laughs> but you know how, like, <laughs> 90s tribal has become associated with um, lower back tattoos on women and, like, sleeves for gym guys? Yeah, big, big. What stereotype arm. would the mandala fall under? Like, if it, like, like, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you see someone with a mandala... You're like, oh, you're this kind of person. Like like a Cam's... Cam, put your drink on the table. <laughs> That's the stereotype. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Easy. You know what I mean? Like you're a basic Easy. bitch. Yeah, correct. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, listen. I'm not I'm not yeah. hating that. Kyla has, oh, like, a Kyla has a fuckload of mandalas. <laughs> Kyla has a mandala on her butthole. Yeah. I'm supposed to take photos how of did, it. How did was you that? wipe today? 
Okay. That's like I'm in the gym locker room and there's a 37 year old dude and he drops trow and he has tribal butthole. Yeah, that's what it'll be in 20. That's years. pretty gnarly. Yeah, I see a lot of kids my age getting mandalas on their buttholes. buttholes? <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's like there's another yeah, one. Yeah, it's a big thing, dude. Like <laughs> all my it, fucking it, friends. It, it, it's bro. like it's like the same thing as tribal. It's like where you can fill your arm with something that's like not imagery. Right. You know, it's just like let me just get covered really fast. Like more like decorative. Yeah. So like, let me just get covered really fast with no imagery. Like it's all just kind of like right. put together and it looks. Whatever. I mean, it is yeah. an image. Yeah. No, like subject matter. Yeah. No subject matter. It's just like like tribal is just like patterns and shapes <laughs> down the whole arm. Do you have a mandala? No, dude. Let me see that butthole. My body refuses to get one. It's rejecting it. Yeah, it rejected. <laughs> it's like, you're not this. You <laughs> yeah. drink black coffee, Joe. Yeah. yeah, it's like, stop what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. What's that red shit on my hand? You know what another idea that I was telling you about? I'll tell Cam. What if we made tattooing into a sport? Why are you laughing at me? I just like where this is going. I, do I look funny? No. Does that look funny? No, you don't. I can't figure out why he's laughing. So you know how each company has a pro team? What do they even do with it? Nothing, right? Yeah. What if these pro teams competed against each other? You could start in the U.S. You could even do, like, state competitions where you, you know, had gathering and you sold seats. Mm -hmm. Maybe the competition itself was, like, a couple hours long where they would compete. You could even have, like... A day before that was called qualifying, you know, and only only certain artists from the pro team would qualify for the big event. Get like cool cool jerseys and jerseys, <laughs> yeah, cool aprons, right? <laughs> like team logos on them. Yeah, dude. And then like, like everyone numbers. competed, and you know, at the end of the season, they would have the you know the top artist and the top team. Would you compete? Would I compete? I would. Really, I, I wouldn't. I would. I would want to be like the the like like the Toto or whatever, like the guy in the, yeah, in the back. Yeah, that's yeah. like that's like oh, with the headset on. That's like the constructor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to be like behind the scenes. I want to be like yelling at people. I would. So I would prefer to be someone that like started the event and possibly a judge. Right. You know, like maybe more in in the workings. Like, well, would you, would it be judged like by a team of panel of judges, or would it be judged by like? I think like Public referees, vote. you know, like you'd have to come up with like what a bunch of tat refs. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like almost like the UFC, you know, it's just like refs that whatever. Well, I mean, so like they do, they do like conventions and they do like contests, right? right. So this would be different though, right? Because it'd be team. Right. It would be team effort. Right. So, because I know like, like you, you do a fair amount of conventions. Yeah. Right. Like. I've only done one convention, like actually tattooed at one convention. Okay. Like just one. Yeah. And I entered one thing and that was it. Did you win? Yeah, I won first place. Fuck yeah. It's pretty sick, you're, right? You're one for one. Yeah, so yeah, I'm one for one. I won yeah. first place traditional at Tampa. Nice. Yeah, so. Uh, Logan, grab this. So it's, and it's like hundreds of people. So you have teams kind of competing. I don't know, maybe like everyone's doing collabs. That would be sick. But then uh, you'd have to source, like, the clients, which I mean, would be fine. Sourcing half the clientele at that point. But there'd have to be, like, rules, you know, like. There'd have to be some sort of guidelines. Right, right. Like, would you have a category or, like, an exact tattoo that, like, people would do? Do you know what I mean? Like. Bro, you could even, like, have the qualifying day. Like, the winner gets to pick the category. Or, like, some crazy mix-up shit. You know, so you got to like stack your team appropriately. But here's the thing, dude: is like you can't do it like like you can't do it like an ink master, right? Like you no, can't do it like no. you can't no do it like the TV. no reality yeah. drama. No. Like it's got to be. I like, think it would be to directly shit on them, not shit on them, but go like go them. against that. Right. Like none of this drama bullshit. Like you're coming to an event. You know, each team has like their station set up and appropriate cameras, so you can like view and like. Everyone's surrounded, and then it's like, go. It's timed in some kind of sense. They're right. trying to accomplish a goal. But a lot of these sporting events, like, you're not always watching what's going on. Like, sometimes you're enjoying the box seats, you're drinking, right. or whatever. I mean, any racing is like that. You know, oh, there they are, they're gone. 
You know, you know what I'm saying? You can be involved. You can watch monitors and blah, 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 right, whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, I would go to that event. I would go to it too. I would want to be the guy in the background. Like I would want to be like, like on the headset. What if you did it? Did, like, okay. What if, what if it was a bunch of apprentices? Like an artist, like, what if it was a bunch of like, hand, you're like box, box, box. What box. if, it, what if, what if, what if instead, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if instead it was like, it was like famous tattooers are like predominant in the industry and, and they had their apprentices and the apprentices had competed and they coached the apprentice. Like, uh, for some yeah, reason, that just made me think of like BattleBots. <laughs> yeah, 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 like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like kind of like BattleBots. Like they exactly. fight each other. But yeah, like they fight There's each no other. There's no tattoo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's like when you'd play World of Warcraft and you'd have a twink. I don't know what that is. It's like a pet. You know what I'm talking about? No, you don't fucking know. I don't, I don't, don't know. Don't worry about it. Okay. It's just like a, it's like a little <laughs> shit on us for playing Fortnite. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a little. I didn't know you played World of Warcraft. Yeah. Dude, I was. I thought like, you didn't have time for video dude, games. Dude, I was a heavy gamer when I was young. Like, really? would compete in Halo Reach and Halo 3, World of Warcraft, all the fucking time, Counter Strike, everything. Mm. And then I was like, <laughs> strung out on drugs. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should spend my time doing other things. And then I got an apprenticeship like a fucking idiot. Now I'm here yeah. with you guys. Yeah, but look at you now. Yeah, but I could be playing World of Warcraft doing heroin. You could, and you fucked up, so now you're here. Right, and this <laughs> is my punishment. Yeah. It's never too late. What would you, what, if, if tattooing became a sport like that, how would you want to see it be done? I think, like, pretty much, like, almost, like, structure it like a professional sports league, though. Like how? I don't know. Like you were saying, like, have, like, the refs, have, like, announcers. Yeah. I think the refs is funny. That'd be funny. The announcers shit. would be crazy. We'd yeah, have to get some, like, bottom. violently, like, mentally ill. Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chuck. Chuck Pizan. <laughs> no need to look more. Bro, he'd look like... Elton John coming out. <laughs> Bro, he would probably <laughs> some fucking paint big the ass fucking stripes on him. Just be <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He'd just be naked every every time. <laughs> Rough stripes. Still yelling machines down. Like, yeah, oh. it'd have to have like some sort of competitive aspect to it. Yeah, that's no the, shit. <laughs> well, that's like the one thing about like tattoos is like they take all day sometimes. Yeah, but they don't have to necessarily. No, no yeah. Like they don't have to be doing like super large scale right. pieces. Um yeah, I don't know. How would you make, like, tattooing more, like, competitive like That's that? That's what I asked you. What about using <laughs> a, a certain needle? Like, you have to make this art. You can only use, like, a tape. That just... That's, like, so rough, though. <laughs> to, yeah, would it like, be, like, to, something like, that switches all the time? Because Ink Master kind of does that, and I'm like, all right. But they don't, know? like, they do? force them to use certain equipment, though. Because everyone does everything, like, Well, a like, only way. stick and poke. Go. Yeah, like, that would <laughs> suck. Or, like... Like no, just, I think there should be circles, like, only like yeah, circles. I think there should be like standards. So like right. you kind of know what to expect every time, and you can build your team around that. Yeah. You know, I do like the idea of like a collaboration because then it really is like a I team. like I like the idea of an apprentice fight. I think that's we put we yeah. it's like Pokemon. Like we go. It's to It's like battle. the preliminaries, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, like, you could have like, like before yeah. the artists are yeah. on the apprentices fight. Yeah. You could set it up it's like fair, a UFC yeah, yeah. fight card. Yeah, like, just have like prelims with the and then like. Final fight of the night is the collab piece. Yeah. Right. Like the but actual like imagine, pay-per-view like we, the fight. The main event. Yeah, the imagine main event's like the we, collab. We bring, we bring our cocks to the cock fight, and the apprentices are the cocks. And we give them, we put like... Razors uh, on their... On like, their yeah. toenails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy, dude. <laughs> dude, my grandfather used to do that shit. Legally. <laughs> what, put it on his toenails? No. Was it, was, it, was it done legally just because like it wasn't illegal? <laughs> oh, yeah, it, no, it definitely was. Dude, it was like a little pit he had in the back of his house, and I'd always go back there. It was just old Cuban guys watching this shit. I'm like, this is tight. Damn. That was super tight. And then they you bet on it, right? It's pretty and aggressive, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? It is, dude. They, they, you don't stop until one dies. And we, to the death. Dude, and we and should then, do that with the apprentices. Yeah. 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 That's pretty sick. Would you how would you fare? Against I think I could throw down versus some apprentice. Ooh, that's a tough one. That's <laughs> like that's a good like that's a good apprentice. Cam versus like some female apprentice <laughs> and loses. Vic from No Man. Yeah. <laughs> She'd fuck you up. I think she would. <laughs> 
I was trying to make her laugh when it was she was here. No. We were filming with Adrian. Bro, it Cam was just be hugging on him. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. Yeah, Vic's the real deal, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what happened with Vic? That we were doing a skit, and like every joke, me and Adrian were trying to say because we we're doing the Steve Buscemi fucked up eyesight uh, one. Yeah, she didn't find anything funny. I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> I'm cold. Like, You're doing great. <laughs> Because the client's supposed to be cold. I'm like, you're killing it. <laughs> She's like, I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Anyway, maybe one day we'll see the National Tattoo League fight. <laughs> come NTO. Come to life. Where apprentices will fight. To the death. What what would we sell there though? Popcorn? Giant like, like it have its own thing. Tattoo machines. Like its own snack. Oh, you mean for snacks? <laughs> yeah. Fig Newtons all around. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like, I like Fig Newtons, like Hot Pockets. And then Damn. there's just like no, that's people, more like a video game there's people yeah. just like dressed in like Uber Eats clothing. <laughs> 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 there's the one DoorDash guy. Uh, it's raining, give them more money. Like what's always being eaten in like donuts, tattoo shops? Yeah. Yeah. Coffee. Depression. Coffee. There's just yeah. coffee Dude, our shop, everywhere. it's always like Thai food. Like a bizarre. That's like, what Kylie eats, and it fucking smells bad. Yeah, it smells bro. like shit, dude. Man, it's bro. always like Thai food or like pho, or like <laughs> I'm like, dude. Um, I think milk. Sarah was eating like a Vietnamese pork chop the other day. That's weird. I was like, no, honestly, it looked so good. <laughs> but I was gonna be like. So. It's like a weird thing yeah. to order for lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a very like it's, it's a so very specific. niche thing. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, I feel like Ted. Like we would only serve cocaine, coffee, cigarettes. At we'd have a happy hour that was you could smoke inside and right all. at these events. You oh could yeah, smoke. yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. Vaping's yeah. absolutely allowed. Yeah. All of it. There's yeah. carpet on the ground like the seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, make yeah. it work. No ashtrays, just carpet. Mm -hmm. and no. ash <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Kids' foreheads just. Yeah. Damn, this sounds awesome! I can't wait to go. It sounds like a good time. There's like people playing dice. Yeah, everywhere, gambling on everything. What is that? Cam's phone. Nope. Okay. Yo, if your alarm Yo, goes off, I think I turned him off. Was that Dan Serna? He's been blowing up my. Oh, I already switched it out. Sheesh. And would we like do? We could. We should like give the clients an award too, like best and worst client. But what would you judge them on? I mean, like who? What, what's? Tell me about some of the worst clients you've ever had. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. I I I like. I've been pretty lucky for the most part, but I think it's because I do tattoos of dicks. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it's just like it's a, a different <laughs> breed of person when someone's like, "Let me get a cum dumpster tattoo," versus like, "I want this like uh this little." Like between the boobs, ohm thing. You know what right. I mean? Like they're two different people. They already between don't the care. boobs, tribal thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Like yeah. the new age tribal thing. But like, I feel like they're from different walks of life. Yeah. You know, like you're coming in to get a dick tattoo. You're not gonna give me a fucking hard time, dude. Like no, you're, just, you're not gonna give me a fucking. You've hard never time, complained dude. about anything in your entire life. Yeah. yeah if like, you get boob yeah. tribal. That's your literally your only tool is to complain. Nobody Correct. gets like. Tribute dicks for fallen loved ones or anything like that? Mm, no, has, I've yet to do that. Don't you have boob boob new? I want to get my dad's dick on me. Yeah, look, that's look. basically a mandala. That's part yeah. of a mandala. I marked her. You're so part of the problem. Knows everyone knows that she's a complainer. Wow, you're not even paying attention to what we're saying, and your whole face is sunburned. I could tell you were at the pool yesterday. Do you want to see what a butthole looks like? <laughs> Like that. That was the mom. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm friends they, with her dad. I don't want to see her butthole. <laughs> no, her she dad wants me to take seen photos it. of she it. She sends like, it in the fucking family group chat. She's like the little retarded sister. I never so got what, I don't see her butthole. What bad clients have you seen in your shop with other people where you're just like, oh, I'm so happy I'm not them? Um, You know what? I think like most of the time, like the clients that I see that are like, I guess like you would call like a bad client are like clients that are just like, disrespect for like order the artists around like yeah. do my tattoo slave yeah. like yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah like, you, dude seriously yeah. like people I'm paying or, you for this yo when people yeah. say that it's like dude like i don't even want to do this anymore like listen like yeah you're paying but you're not paying enough to be the way that you're you're being <laughs> right. right now okay right. like 
You know, like is there a number for you to be treated like that? Absolutely. <laughs> Anyone that says there's not a number, my my, my number is low. Right. Like, you know? like, throw five hundred bucks I, in this session. Treat me how you want. Yeah, like seriously, five hundred. Five hundred bucks. Okay. Uh, oh no, no, that's fine. That's a good answer. <laughs> so, let's say, what's your average tattoo? Three to seven hours, or what's yours? Like for me, no, no. I, I and I tattoo quick now, so like I'm usually depending on what is average, probably like maybe three hours. All right. So what's your price for someone to treat you like garbage ink slave for three hours? Like, all right, give me an example of what garbage ink, sl ink slave is. Like what you're just saying, like oh, I'm paying you to do whatever I want. Blah, blah, like blah, just complain. like talk shitty to me. Like, am I allowed to, well, you described it. You described yeah, this, yeah, yeah, this yeah. client. Like, just, so visualize that person. Um, Making like, changes, like hurry up. How long is this gonna take? Right, like it that hurts. Kind of thing. They're moving. They want you to give like, me numbing stuff. Everyone's always like, <laughs> "That's the new one." Dude. Is it that's too late the, to numb? That's the new one. They're like, "Yo, can you give me some numb?" And like, "Yo, all the time, <laughs> dude, num, 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 num. <laughs> <laughs> dude." I'm about to, I'm about to, like, so I, I'm about to fill a back team bottle with water and just like, <laughs> what a fucking good idea, or, or alcohol, effects. or alcohol, bro. You gotta when they say that, you have to spray their face, bro. <laughs> Like no, cat. no. <laughs> like, have you ever used Mattisite to like get rid of homeless people? <laughs> we should try it. Me neither. It but <laughs> but yeah, you should take the fucking back team, and if they're doing the nom 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 thing, just spray them in the face. And be like, nom, bad, nom, bad, nom. Bad. no, 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 no. They're, no, gonna, no, they're no. gonna hiss at you. Yeah. you know, That's learn. like, I get that all. Like, I can't even tell you like all the time, and like. My friends, like who are like heavily tattooed, are like, "I've earned my stripes." I'm like, "Not with me, motherfucker." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, I, that's the thing too. That's like the old heads. They're like, they're like, well, you know, I already like got a bunch of tats like without numbing cream, so you yeah. know, I don't need to prove anything to any. I'm like, you got to prove it to me, <laughs> right? I've never tattooed you, dude. It's like kind of like, I don't know, like. I'm going back to what you were saying before. So, like, for me to get tattooed, what's my price? To be treated like that. For, like a, just three hour, for a three hour terrible, tattoo. Terrible, terrible. Like, you are like, I don't even want to be a tattooer anymore. Yeah. But but that feeling goes away once they leave. And you get paid 1500 bucks. Three hours. Yeah. 500 an hour. You were 500? Yeah. <laughs> 500 an hour. And, like, yeah, like, you can, you can spit on me and whatever. I don't care. Three hours. I'm pretty. I can be. Very tolerant and patient if I want. Like, to. it's not that long, you know? Yeah. And I can be fake nice. I've been practicing my whole career. Like, I, and, and I have like a technique that, like, I'll just, like, if they, how long is this going to take? I don't know. How long is it going to take? Like, I just re a answer questions with answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you can't do that. It's a cop out, dude. Like, <laughs> you can't. I never do that. Wow, this shirt is actually really nice. If you haven't already, you need to check out themodelcitizenapparel.com. It has the best tattoo clothing I've ever seen. And I'm quite a critic when it comes to fashion, clothing, whatever. The design has to be cool and the material has to be comfortable, at least form fitting. They have a range of styles from vintage to modern. They're continuing to work with new artists featuring new designs and articles of clothing. You need to check out this company, themodelcitizenapparel.com, or you can check out their social media, which is Model Citizen Apparel. It's the best. I see tons of artists like put headphones on. I've seen you do that. Katie. Headphones? Well, no, I've seen you do it at conventions. That's different. Yeah, but that's not even, that's, I always vibe with my client. That's like for passer buyers. Like right. if, if it's like becoming too much and like, I'm not spending enough time on the tattoo. That's the only time I'll do that. And I tell my client, like, yo, I'm not even going to listen to music and I can hear with these on. So if you need me, let me know. This is so everyone walking by thinks I can't hear. And hopefully Danny edits this out so that people don't know. <laughs> so people don't come slow. Oh my God, it's done. How many yeah. people came up to you at the I last I know convention? you can hear like, me. That's a trailer right there. Did you get fangirled on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a screech or two. I probably you, you got fangirled on too, didn't you? Not as much as him. We got a cool took fifty pictures. Yeah. Fifty pictures. That's a good amount of pictures. Same face. Probably Which around one? fifty pictures. I haven't even been asked by my wife to take fifty pictures <laughs> in the entire time I've been married to her. <laughs> no, it was good. It was a good turnout. 
We got, I kept trying to push them off the cam. They'd be like, hey, what's up? And I'd be like, yo, you see I brought cam? <laughs> Tight. Yeah. And cam would be like, so. Yeah, your voice goes low. So. 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 <laughs> what's up? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sh- all right. So, cam, what's. I, I've already asked. Cam, like, doesn't have bad clients either. He's, like, too new. I was going to be like, what's They're all his know? girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and he <laughs> won't talk about girlfriend. it. <laughs> what do you mean he won't talk My about it? My clients are pretty, mi- like, pretty mild. They're, yeah, you got cool clients. They're all just young. I tattoo a lot they're of all, I, They're all. They're all your girlfriend or this. what? Sure. What? What? Huh? You said sure? Yeah. Why not? What was the question? I said they're all your girlfriend or? Oh, sure? you said sure. Yeah. This whole page is pretty much his girl tattooed in different locations. <laughs> yeah. like, Alex is like, all right, let's go through your fucking clients so we can hit people back up. Victoria, Victoria, Victoria. Victoria. Her brother, her yeah, brother, her brother. <laughs> Dude, I have this one Alex. client. <laughs> I kind of like miss the walking. Not, I don't, but like I like to think about him. Like when I would take walk-ins, like I had this one client. He would just show up every fucking Sunday. And it was like his break from his family. Like, he's like, finally I made it to Sunday. I get to go over to the tattoo shop, chill with the boys, right? We weren't his boys, <laughs> right? And he would come to the tattoo shop with, like, 30 beers. It's not an exaggeration. And drink all of them in, like, two hours. You just get hammered? <laughs> Trash, bro. Damn. And, like, I kept telling him, I was like, yo, you got to make an appointment. <laughs> you can't just show up here and get trashed. And get trashed. <laughs> Yo, but every Sunday, either my appointment would cancel or somehow I'd have open time and I'd be like, yeah, I guess I'll just take it, man. So I was like teaching him that it was okay to continue to do this. Yeah, you, it was a learned him. behavior. Like, yeah. You bro. enable him. You're yeah. An like he, so I, it was just as much my fault as whatever. And then, like, one day, like, enough was enough. I didn't want to do it anymore. Like, my career was getting to the point where, like, I was actually booking out. Because he would show up and get upset. And I'd be like, I kind of liked him. I was like, well, at this point, we You had so to like him enough time. to let him drink 30 beers in the <laughs> yeah. shop every, yeah, 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 every yeah. single Sunday. Wait. For I'll like, wait. <laughs> yeah, for, like, a client that I wasn't <laughs> friends with prior, like, we were cool. Yeah. We were cool. He was, he's, a, he's a good guy. Uh but I, I was getting frustrated with him because I was like, Yo, you have to set an appointment because I felt bad that I couldn't tattoo him. And if he set an appointment, I was totally fine with tattooing him every Sunday. Like, let's just set a standing appointment. You've literally come here every Sunday for months. Right. You know? Um, so then his drinking gets worse and you can tell that it's like probably an issue for him and more importantly, his family. Um, and his like wife's coming in and kind of being like don't let him drink almost like she's keeping her it's like eye such on an him. awkward position <laughs> yeah. to be in. i was down for it though yo so then he comes in a lo- he's like he's trashed she's there she's mad he's trashed he's trying to make up for it by telling me he's gonna get her name tattooed on him like babe i'm a i'm getting your name uh tattooed like that's why i'm drunk you know like just not making sense trying to Whatever. Right. He comes back the next day without her, and it's like, yo, I'm g- I want to get my wife's name tattooed on my finger. I was like, yeah, like, let's run it. And he's like, yeah, uh, I want to – I'm like, what's her name? He's like, Katie, which is my sister's name. And the way he spelled it was like K-A-Y. He was like throwing in letters. Now, I'm pretty familiar with this name and the spelling. And I understand, you know, people spell their name different. But I'm like, yo, are you sure that's how you spell How you spell. Which I was hesitant to ask because, like, yo, asking another man, like, are you sure that's how your wife spells her name? Because Was he trash? He was trash. Trash. And he's like, bro, you think I don't know how to spell my own wife's name? Was it K? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. That was a dumb question. (laughs) I'm sorry I asked. I was concerned that I probably shouldn't ask. Like, I was all nervous about it. I did it anyway, and I fucked up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to be offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You Whatever you want. You are very drunk. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so we, like, tattooed the name, and I'm like, all right, cool. We're done. Next day, he comes back in with his wife, and he's like, I spelled the name wrong. <laughs> I was like, bro, you spelled... 
your own wife's name wrong? He's like, yeah, I was a little drunk. <laughs> so this is like, this was the beginning of the end for him. So he just like kept coming in. It, at this point, like I didn't want to tattoo him anymore. It, the drinking was just too much of an issue. So now I was kind of avoiding him. Or like when he would come into the shop, I'd be like, hey, sorry, I'm busy all day, whatever. You have to set an appointment. I was being more stern. I wasn't like cool John anymore. Right. I'm doing this tattoo. You know, this is a couple weeks later. I haven't really seen him since. I'm like, all right, cool. He found somewhere else to go or maybe he went to rehab or something. It was at that point. I'm stressed out. I'm doing this tattoo. I'm, I'm setting up a palette for this tattoo. And my phone, like, keeps going off. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I like, look, it's a number I don't know. I click it. And my boss can tell I'm stressed. And he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, dude, someone's called my phone like five, six times in a row. I'm already stressed about this tattoo. You know, you're in a walking shop. The vibe is like getting ready. It's too much going on. So then my boss types in the number and I guess he has his number saved too. And he goes, oh, it's coming up as this person's name. Let's say it's Cam. It's not his name, but I don't want to use his real name, even though I remember it. And I'm like, oh, Cam. I'm like, yo, that's that fucking guy. And my boss is like, oh, like the drunk guy that comes in? I'm like, yeah. And then he calls again my phone, and I look at it, and I know his first and last name. Let's say it's Cam Fonte. And I look at my phone, and I'm like, not today, motherfucker. Throw it up. Or I'm, I'm like, oh, Chris, this is Cam Fonte. And I go, not today, motherfucker. And I throw up the phone in the air, like onto my bed. And, like, as I'm watching it land, his face is right there. <laughs> no way. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, I just screamed this man's first and last name. <laughs> I said, not today, motherfucker. <laughs> Laughed at my boss. Ha, ha, ha. Fuck the drunk guy. Right? And he's right there. My first thought is, why are you calling me when you're standing right <laughs> next to me? Right? <laughs> And he looks over at me and he goes, that was rude. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I look at my boy. I look at my boss and he's dying laughing at me. I can't figure out if he knew he was there or not, which would be even more funny. And I literally just walked out the back door. <laughs> It's my last day. Bro, I'm setting up for the tattoo. So I walk out the back door. I'm just like standing there like thinking of how i can get out of this finally my boss walks back outside and he's like yo there's nothing you can do <laughs> <laughs> he's like bro you said his first and last yeah. name. <laughs> i'm like fuck bro you should just bought him a, you should just bought him a 30 pack <laughs> yeah like be, you know going. i didn't even think about that so like i was probably out there for 10 minutes thinking of every way which way i could get out of this and i couldn't so i was like all right i'm just gonna go apologize so i like went up to him and i'm like Hey, sorry, man. I'm really <laughs> stressed out today. And I couldn't figure, and that wasn't fair or whatever. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. Anyway, can I get tattooed? <laughs> and, I, and I was like, you know, no. And I ended up never seeing that guy again. Was he drunk? Never again? What? Was he drunk that time? I'm sure he was, Cam. Are you sure? It was probably you think he's dad. watching right now? <laughs> you think he was Cam's dad? Could have been. Could have been. I don't think he's like, watching right now. And if he is watching right now, I, he's probably in recovery and has an amazing life. And I hope he's so. embarrassed about previous behavior like that. If you're watching right now, John has time today. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching and you haven't found recovery, Jeff owns a treatment center. It's called Moving Mountains. I will help you. Moving Mountains Recovery. What if you ask him, like, what the fuck did you want? Just calling to see how you were, man. What's <laughs> yeah, on? Seven just, calls in a row? I was just calling because like, I took your advice and I wanted Dude, to set up an appointment. <laughs> like a movie. Like the phone went in slow motion and was like flipping. And every time the screen faced me, it would like glimmer light into my eye. And all of a sudden his face is there. And he's like, that was rude. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, dude. Dude, what if it happened again? Like very similar you're we like why is this fucking guy calling me and then he's just standing behind have you ever had a crazy embarrassing moment like that at a tattoo shop um i don't 
think so. What's been your most embarrassing situation? Let's go with that. Make it a little more broad. I don't really, like, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of something that's, like, em- embarrassing, like, that. Think about it. I will. What about you, Cam? My whole apprenticeship? Your whole apprenticeship? <laughs> Just give us one detail. I want to compare apprenticeships from yours to people that apprentice at Jeff's shop. <sighs> had my, forcibly had my hair dyed, saying. What, by uh, Tiny? Yeah. She it's overtook adorable. you? <laughs> yeah. Little Katie overtook you and dyed your hair? Yeah. Okay. You okay? It's, it's, it's I would gone be embarrassed, now. too. It was green, right? It was bad, dude. You know, you shit I have one, but it's it was different. the worst color ever. It was vomit green in like two days. I it was my gross. Hair. It was when gross. I, when I bleached my hair and I jumped into the pool two days later, that's what happened. My mom refused. See, to like we bleached my hair and then she colored it and it just looked like shit. That's how I met it you. It looks so bad. Yeah. I don't my think first I've, intro. Have I ever embarrassed you? <laughs> On TikTok every day. <laughs> uh, I give you this platform. Bro, you're a star. <laughs> Seriously. Did you think of one? One time I was told, like, when I was first started apprenticing, I was sent to get blinker fluid. That was that was pretty... <sighs> That's pretty not chill. I, I, <laughs> that's pretty not chill. I, I, I once searched the shop an hour for Bobby to find a flux capacitor for his <laughs> tattoo machine when I first started. <laughs> Bro, Bobby convinced Adrian the printer was oh voice God. activated. <laughs> Bobby is the apprentice oh destroyer. <laughs> Bro, so the printer wasn't working and like just off rip so seamlessly. Like it was not planned. Adrian's like, the printer's not working. I don't know what's going on. Bobby's like, oh, I switched it to Siri, like, voice-activated mode. And Bo- and Adrian's like, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder. And he's like, he's like, just switch it back. And Adrian's like, all right, how? And he's like, well, you just got to give it the voice command. But he's like, tell it to go to settings. Just say, because it's a brother printer. So he said, you know. To say, hey, brother. <laughs> open settings. Brother. So Adrian's like, Adrian's like, hey, brother, open settings. And Adrian's like, and then he's like, okay, now repeat off this code. And Adrian's like, okay. And he's like, five, six, you know, eight, nine. Adrian's like, brother printer, five, six, eight, nine. And he just kept going with numbers. Eight, and six, then, seven, five, and then three, he was oh, like, nine. And then Bobby's like, okay, now say um, the keyword phrase. And Adrian's like, okay. And he's like, you know, he's like making up words, you know, uh, fox, yellow, whatever. Adrian's like, fox, yellow, whatever. And he's like, Adrian this. He's like, Adrian this. He's like, printer is not voice activated. He's like, printer is not. Oh, fuck. (laughs) I think the whole thing's on video. It is. Bobby kept his composure the whole time. Right. And just walked away. Did his (laughs) bro. Don't break. Fake it till she's naked. Bro, I was in this um, therapeutic oh. community rehab. Oh, Touchstone. You went to Touchstone. I was at Touchstone, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, Touchstone was fire. So, and it, it wasn't. It was terrible. It was actually, like, one of the worst. <laughs> it actually got shut down yeah. for physical abuse to yeah, children. Like, it, it, yeah, it was like, for, like, human rights violations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, it was Great sick. place. <laughs> uh, when we were in Touchstone, like, when the new kids would come in, you would get a bed in, like, a room. And the whole, it was the only time that the community would ever work together on something. Everyone hated each other. But for some reason, when a new kid came in and everyone got on board with fucking with that new, new, everything was dropped. Like no one was in like weird gangs or like, like everyone was together. together. Yeah. There was no beef. Right. No beef. Stealing mattresses and shit. No, we (laughs) would tell the kids, you'd be like, oh, what's that new kid? You know, and be like, hi. He'd be all upset because he's gonna be there for like six months or a year. He got just got his head shaved. Yeah, he just know? got his head shaved. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, dude, I was a fucking barber too. I love that shit. Like, <laughs> whatever. So he would come in. Everyone would be like kind of nice to him and like, oh, what's up, new kid? You got everything you need. You know, he'd be like, mm, you know, and just like, hey man, what's up, I'm John. You know, if you need anything, let me know. Thanks, thanks. And someone would finally come in and be like, oh, yo, new kid, you did you get your mattress stamped? And he'd be like. <laughs> Oh, oh, what? And they're like, yeah, like, you got to bring your mattress 
to the office and like get it stamped so that it's associated with you if any damage happens or you know sometimes people take mattresses like you know where it is you have your number like oh thanks where's the office and we'd be like oh like when you walked in dude it was so far from the rooms <laughs> yeah it was, and it was, it was downstairs yeah. <laughs> so you had to like go down this crazy long hallway and dude would be dragging his mattress and i don't know if you ever dragged the mattress but it's not fun to no, drag no and no one would break like they'd be like hanging out their doors of the room and they'd be like, oh, that's what's up, new kid, getting your mattress stamped, eh? And he'd be like, yeah, you know, the guys told me, you know? And he'd be like, oh, what's up, new kid, you're getting that stamp, bro, right? You know? Drag it all the way down these old stairs, back down a crazy hallway. There was no mattress stamp, bro. <laughs> and sometimes they would make it all the way to the office. And, like, the person at the office was so familiar with this happening, they would just, like, look down and be like, they see you coming with the mattress. They'd be like, like, oh God. Go back to your room. <laughs> there is no mattress stamp. Do not listen to anything the guys tell you. Only listen to the staff. But it was the, one of the most magical experiences of my childhood. <laughs> Did you like being in touchstone? Fuck no, dude. It was terrible. <laughs> Literally, listen, like it was such a rude awakening for me. Like I was like on like probation. So, like, I was, like, forced to go for, like, legal reasons, and I went, and it was, like, I, like, didn't even know what I was getting myself into, and I went there, and I remember, like, I went in, I had, like, nice long locks of hair, Ooh. oh, yeah, and I went in, and they fucking, dude, I when they told me I had to shave my head, I thought it was a joke, like, I thought... Me too. I like, thought they were kidding. Like yeah. I thought they were like it was like a hazing thing. They were dead serious. Like I had to shave my head. I by I, one of the other kids. Yeah, by one of the other kids. Not even like a barber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like court ordered to go there. Like yeah. those people were, oh. or like from jail. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was say, God. yeah. It was like um, it was not a nice place. It was a lot of like gang member kids and like yeah. like a kid got stabbed in the neck with a pencil when I was there. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Happens. Yeah, <laughs> that was a thing they did. Because you went to school. You had to go to school because you're underage. So yeah. John Wick went there. Sorry, John. Yeah. Yeah, John Wick. John Wick Jr. <laughs> Sounds like a burger place. <laughs> what's your, what's your, your fondest memory? Of Touchstone? Being touched. Um... Yeah, the I mean, I used horrible. to, my, no, my, the best memory I had is like, I used to, you remember how you used to like walk around the like thing? Like there was like, you'd walk around like that big ass building or whatever, like the whole complex, like they would like, yeah, let you like go on walks. Walk. but remember like family weekend. Yeah. So my dad would come for family weekend and, and I, I made him feel like such a piece of garbage. <laughs> yeah. Like there. you're supposed to. Yeah. Like I was like, it's terrible. Yeah. Right yeah I was, like I was like, I was like, you should basically just fucking kill me. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And Do it uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> Before good leave stops you. Yeah, yeah. Good leave. Yeah. Um, I used to get Seracol from him and snort it. <laughs> um, bro, I was getting dumb high in there, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had me like over medicated. Like <laughs> yeah. it was terrible. They didn't want to deal with everyone, so they put everyone on Seracol. They, yeah, they put everyone on these like uh like antipsychotic medications that were basically like they would just like suppress you could just be like a zombie. Danny, have you ever taken Seroquel? No, I haven't. All right, listen. Do yourself a favor sometime. Just take 25 milligrams. Kyle, do you have some? Just just so you can get some perspective. Bro, when I left, I was on 600 milligrams <laughs> yeah. a day. Yeah. It's, that's like a horse pill, bro. You've just gone from like drowsiness to like now it's an antipsychotic. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's bad. Um, but my dad would bring me, I'd make him feel so bad. He'd bring me cigarettes. Like he'd bring Ooh. me a cigarette and like, I would like hide uh, behind and he would cover for cigarettes me were treasure in there. Dude, dude. It was the shit, you know, that was like probably, or like, um, we used to play hacky sack. That was, yeah. that was kind of ping cool. pong, ping pong, ping pong yeah. went hard in there. I don't know if you ever got, got down in there with ping pong. I was never that good i we used to play assassin with a hacky sack you know like we yeah, kick we it three keep, times yeah. and then boot someone <laughs> yeah. in the face with it yeah. so yeah yeah so that i had some good memories of that but uh i've been saying for years that we should send cam to rehab for like 30 <laughs> days to just experience it like a state-run rehab any of them we could send him to yours for all i care yours no, sounds a little Kyla. too fun though oh god do you do screenings yeah what do you yeah. mean screenings i can i can tell you she needs it yeah. Like an assessment? <laughs> can, can we do that for Kylo right now? Can you give her the questions? Oh, yeah, let's do that. 
That'd we'll do it for tight. Kim first, and then we'll do. Yeah, it for I can Kyle. call admissions right now on speakerphone and have to go through. Exactly. Should we do fucking that? Tight. Hell yeah. Yeah. Let's see if you qualify. You have to answer honestly, though. All right. All right. You really want me to? <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? Will they know it's your number? Or do you know the assessment questions? Yeah. Do you have them? Or like off the top of your head? Why don't you just do it? We don't have to. We don't have to bother your staff. I was gonna say, and they might be pissed, but they'll they'll do it because. What's the qualifications? Let's go with that. Well, I I mean the basic. So the, the assessment. Why are you calling today? <laughs> well, the, assess, the, the, the assessment starts like with basic information, like what's your name, you know, what's going on today, and like that kind yeah. of thing. But um, let's do that. Go ahead. What's your name? Admissions. This is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeff. I'm having some trouble. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Cam. Cam, nice to meet you. So when you say you're having some trouble, what does that mean? Don't look at me. Dark times. Dark times. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Drug problems. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Well, what? Uh, can you elaborate on that? What? What kind of problems are you having? And, and you know, what? What substances are you using? So you're heavily honest. Yeah. Ugh. Heavy marijuana use. But uh, the, the assessment's like kind of based around you know like what's going on with the person. Like you want to know what's 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 bringing them to this point because there's a breaking point right when you go to rehab. Whether the breaking point is court or whether the breaking point is. Um, you know, it, it can be, so it can be legal problems. It can be work. We get a lot of that. Like a lot of people, you know, struggling at work and they're, they're going to lose their job. It could be family. It could be like, you know, wife, husband, whatever, like someone's struggling and, or like they're struggling, whatever their wife is pushing them to do it. A, a lot of times it's from like exterior things that are pushing you to get help. So it's not like, uh, like a majority of people I would say don't wake up and they're like, I'm going to quit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it just doesn't work. It didn't Dude, work that way for I've me. made so many treatment calls for myself. Really? Yeah. And like at the time, like, and I even like knew what to say. To I was like, like a going it. down swinging kind of person. Like I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like not. Happy. Like you were not going to I was like high right. on a couch being like, I'm not even hot, man. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, that was me. Like, I wasn't... Oh, uh, it's such a bad... Not Maybe I'll tell this story on Patreon, but essentially, like, both my girlfriends found out about each other Damn. and, like, stole my drugs and, like, I was sick. It was, a like, a bottom. Like, a good 18-year-old bottom, you know? It was a bad night. So the next day, I was just like, yeah, I guess I'm just going to go to rehab again. And I, like, called them, and, fuck, there's a lot of this story that I actually can't say because it'll get the video taken down. There are a couple things on an assessment call that you definitely can't say, right? Absolutely. I said all those things because I was trying to be honest. And they're like, well, they're like, well, when did this happen? Admissions. And I'm like, last night. And they're like, oh, sweetheart, like, we can't take you. You have to go somewhere else, right? You know what I'm talking about, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then I was like, why? And they're like, because you did all those things. And I was like, oh, no, I meant, like, I was just thinking about them, and I didn't, I didn't actually do those things, even though I just said I did those things. And they're like, well, then you qualify. Come on. <laughs> on. Listen, lady, I'm a hallucinator. Right, now. Yeah. I need you. right you're like, I was... JK. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I must have cut out. I said JK. I said that. You know, all, all jokes no aside, homo. though, like we, we do get people that are like for like heavy marijuana use. Like, dude, weed's not what it was like when I smoked weed as like a kid, you know, yeah. like and 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 you know what? It's like a big is a big um, like piece of like misinformation is that look like it's not always about the drugs right like some people can smoke pot and like whatever and it's totally fine and like other people like do it addictively and like it affects their life like right. the, the question i would i would i would ask yeah it's someone, like i'm dependent on is, it for sure it, but, it, but if yeah but here's the thing it's like i would ask you as like a friend i'd be like yo like cam like does it negatively impact your life like does it cause harm in your life yeah <laughs> you might want to you might want to look at that sincerity in his eyes yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes yeah if you turn around you can see his dealer well anyway uh what's your insurance looking like <laughs> slides a note let me get that number yeah all right kyla seems overly 
Do you want to get assessed? Go. You need help. Switch seats <laughs> with Kai real quick. <laughs> Verge. Come on, Kai. Go ahead. You were just saying the other day, you're like, I want to be on the podcast. Yeah. I want to do so That's good. Why. When I was like, yo, Cam sucks. We should get him off the podcast. You're like, I want to be on the podcast. And he's like, maybe he's not that bad. Yeah, he did not say you suck. All right. I'll just, we'll just tell everyone he went to rehab for pot. Yeah. All right. It's a social experiment. Call him. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. You got to answer the questions this time, on. Oh, I got to do the assessment? Yeah, do I don't assessment. really know, but I'll You know I'll the try. assessment, John. You've called a lot of places. Oh, it's been dude. like a decade yeah, but since like, I dude, went just, to just, Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. can make it up. Yeah. Go ahead. Ring, ring. Hello, Moving Mountains Recovery. <laughs> this is John speaking. How can I help you? Hi, John. First Hi. of all, if you talked like that, you're fine. You're fired. <laughs> Okay, all right, hold on. Let me try again. Why do you sound so, like, miserable? Because that's how they sounded to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Maybe not a I want to give her You want to sound hopeful, bro. What? You want to sound hopeful. Bro, the statistics are, like, 3%. Get clean. Statistics? Yeah. There is no hope. Okay? I'm being real. There is hope. If you and I are sitting at this table together, there's hope. All right, Kyle. Go ahead, call Jeez. again. Ring, God, ring. you can't say that. Yeah, Kyla. You have to say Sue. Yeah, say pepper. Go ahead. Ring, ring. Hey, sorry about that. We got cut off before. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Who am I speaking with? Hi, my name is Kyla. Oh, that's a weird made-up name. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What's going on with you, K Kira? <laughs> <laughs> I have some problems. No shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of problems um drinking like drinking alcohol yes mental health um i think i have autism all right God. well listen you've definitely called the right place i think i can help you out with at least two of those <laughs> <laughs> which ones yes <laughs> 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 do you have insurance <laughs> blue cross blue shield well i forget the other steps dude i'd be high every time i call <laughs> after that i'm just in treatment like cool you're here now all right no, no no actually i remember a couple more questions so how often are you drinking um well not anymore actually but i was drinking a lot when did you have your last drink I can tell you the date. Nine days ago. <laughs> All right. Eight, so you have days. nine days sober. Nine days. nine days. Congrats on that. So you were still looking to seek help? Yeah. And when you were drinking, how much were you drinking? <laughs> right? That's a question. Yeah. A I lot. Mean, you, want, you want a background on everything. What? A lot. And when you say that you have mental health, can you be more specific about that? Yeah. Anxiety, depression. OCD, autism. This is, dude, this is depressing me. <laughs> <laughs> this is making me depressed. This is real, Jeff. <laughs> this yeah, is real. It, I understand that. I'm going to give her a card when I leave, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, for real? You actually think I need help? Do you think you need help? No. What What other questions? <laughs> Why are you actually Hold confused. on, hold on. He's, you're not on the phone with him. What other questions? Hold on. Can I put you on a brief hold? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what other questions do you ask? We ask about, you know, the fa family support growing up. Like, all, we want a background on what's going on. Hey, you still there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about your family support and growing up? Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> my family lives in Jersey, but I have um, my boss here, John, and... Where I work, like wow, that's great. More than so I'm gonna put you on. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on with our specialist. <laughs> Does she qualify? Yes. Damn. Hey, you still there? Yeah. I'm hey, you still there? Here. Uh, you won. You can go to treatment. We'll see you when you get here. What if I don't want to go? Click. Yeah. All right, the car's waiting for you outside. Like <laughs> intervention. Well, John hired. Do you accept this? 
<laughs> Will you accept this help today? No, uh, but, but dear but, Kyla, I wrote you this letter because who you used to be <laughs> a great sister to me. Our um, no, but like, I, see, I don't, I don't answer the phone. Like, I'm not that good on on like the calls. I, I I'm not as like uh, trained and versed in it, you know. But right. our admissions people are like real. They're really, really great. Like, they actually give a shit. And, like, they yeah. care. And like the the thing that's really cool about our company is that like everyone is family. So like. Like, even if they're they're not like they come in and they, and and they're part of like this kind of movement. Like we know all of the people down to like the admissions reps. Like we know them well, and we have um, you know, a really good understanding of who they are as people. So like our big thing was like because I I like yourself, you know, had many calls with treatment centers and like was on the phone with these people and um, I was like this guy doesn't give a fucking shit about me. Like no one cares. You yeah. know what I mean. But like that's the thing is like we don't like when when these people start with us like we make it very clear like this isn't like any other job that you're gonna have like if you treat this like it's a job we're not the right place for you right you right, know, right you have to actually give a shit no and you see a bunch of places that unfortunately or fortunately I guess like do treat it just like a job and it's just like a whatever thing and blah blah, blah. and like I know I'm making light of the situation and that's just how I approach everything in my life right. and it's like the one thing I feel a hundred percent confident that I'm allowed to make fun about because it's me I'm making fun of me right absolutely. you know I'm making fun of the fact that like I, you know I was that like terrible person on the phone I was that like crazy drug addict like the person you walked on the other side of the street to avoid and totally. whatever. And like, cool, we're not there anymore. And there, there is hope, you know, but I, I would rather like joke and poke fun and have fun about, cause sometimes this shit just like sad, you know, like our boy died like a couple of weeks ago yeah. over this kind of stuff. And it happens over and over and over again. And I mean, I could choose to, it, it happens so often that it's just a constant. And I could look at that all the time, negative, all my friends are dying, no one is succeeding, addiction is winning, blah, 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 you know, or I could step away from it and like appreciate, you know, either humor or like my friends that Absolutely. have made it, whatever. Absolutely. You know? No, I agree. I, I think like, uh, I'm the same way. I have to make, it's like a way that I cope with it is make, make light of, you know, like some kind of like dark sense of humor, I guess, so to speak. Yeah. And any like client or person in recovery that like I make these jokes with typically laughs. Absolutely. The people that really get it's offended relatable. are the family or like the loved ones around, you know, which, I, which I also understand that. And I don't mean to like be disrespectful or have those people feel bad, right. but it's like, it's about the addict or the alcoholic. If there's something that you can do to build rapport, build trust with someone, I think that it's a good thing to do. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, and like you said, the main point or like the main person we're trying to reach and try to help is is that addict or alcoholic right you know bro like last time i got clean i was in treatment and uh i mean you know it's like the hundredth fucking time in treatment this weird thing was happening with me detoxing where i lost my vision for like two weeks right? you were blind yeah no you weren't yeah like fully blind so in one of my eyes was completely blind and then the other eye couldn't focus or stay straight. Like it was going in like towards a, my nose. And like the way it was described to me was like that. Shammy? What? What's that? <laughs> like <Yeah>. Steve? <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was wild. And like the doctors were like, yeah, this happens sometimes. Like almost like an atrophy to your like eye muscles. Damn, you like, you got so high that you were blind. Right. And so I like come in and they're like, yeah, like when you're done detoxing, like your eyes probably are going to go back to normal. And I'm like, so I'm doing like drug addict math in my head. I'm like, so if you give me like Suboxone right now, I can see. They're like, theoretically, yeah. I'm like, run it. They're like, no. I'm like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> Whatever. So I'm like walking to treatment blind and I look like an idiot because my eyes are like kind of crossed and I have no control over like where they're looking or going. It right. was a very strange experience. And my boy works at the treatment center and he looks at me and he's like, yo, you're fucking back, bro. And I'm like, yeah, it's rough out there. And he looks <laughs> at me and he goes, yeah, I guess you've seen it all. <laughs> and it was exactly what i needed bro i died laughing 
We were just ripping on each other the whole time. It's like what I needed. I needed a dark humor fucking laugh. I needed someone to like not take this situation so serious where I felt like all this pressure. I needed my boy to rip on me <laughs> about the fact that I was blind <laughs> from using drugs. You know? Stevie Wonder must have done a lot of heroin. Right, right. <laughs> 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 uh, but to each their own. To each their own. So anyway, Cam, uh, you're going to rehab tomorrow. <laughs> what else, Cam? Bring up a topic. Oh, did we, um, Dan, we, we got a product? Like a tattoo product? Product? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were doing that this one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was for No. Oh, I thought it was. All right. Well, even before it, I was like, make sure you got that product. All right, give it over. Just gonna throw an after packet at you. Support. Make it funny. Oh, come on. they're our sponsor. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> Kylo. No, get a different product. All right, you you can grab that one. I don't care. Here, grab John's toy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah! This is a new segment we're adding. Do you know what it's called? Product reviews. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he actually fucking... <laughs> Cam, you're going to name it. Tell Jeff what it's called. Product reviews? That's such a terrible fucking name. That's what you want to call it? Wait, like this segment? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it our, good? Our take? I don't know. What? Our, our opinion? Take. Our opinion. Our opinion. I don't like it. Our opinion? opinion. <laughs> Does it slap? Is this product gas? Oh, <laughs> that's bad. I knew that would piss you that's off. That's bad. No, that's that's like a mandala. Good bad. <laughs> it's like a mandala. He says. Barber gum. Gas or trash? Do you know about that's that? that's it? Gas or trash? Gas or trash? You, right. did, it, my, you did it, my boy. We've done this a million times. Obviously, <laughs> it's called gas or trash. So, Kyla throws random products at us. We decide if it's gas or trash. We're going to let Cam start. Taste it first. So we have Inkies, Pink Rose. Do you use Inkies? <sighs> no? Do you use any, like, butter, anything while you're tattooing? Vaseline. Margarine? Yeah. Vaseline? Yeah, like, sometimes I use mayonnaise. <laughs> you just lube them up before you needle fuck them? I'm a big dry wiper. See. Dry till I die, baby. I like that. Dry till I die. People don't like it. They die. They yeah. They Doesn't don't. Last very they long. don't appreciate me. But you actually like wipe. Oh, I am a dabber. Oh no 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 I no! I just no. dab on them. I'm like a sandpaper scrape. <laughs> I love when it makes the sound. <laughs> You're just like adding redness to your tattoo. <laughs> yeah, but I wish hazel. It's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the Vaseline's for. This stuff smells really strong. Like good or bad? Like bubble gum. I mean, I don't know if it should smell. I think like it's it not a bad good. smell. Smell it. it's not. A, it reminds me of a dentist office. Is it just like? Oh, it smells good. It does. <laughs> yeah, taste it. You're gonna taste it. Damn, try it. All right. So the smell is gas, right? <laughs> it smells gas. But is it just ointment? Is that all it is? It's just yeah. It's just glide. So like, what's the point of like? Honestly, it adds a nice accent color to your station. <laughs> That's that makes sense to me. But makes I'm your saying, setup like, look what cooler. Is the point? You rub it on the skin. How much does this cost? I don't too know. much. Probably too much, right? For what it it's is, it's probably twenty bucks. It's more Most than aqu- more like than Aqua Four for less. <laughs> I'm very wasteful with these products. Not on purpose. I just take the same amount every time, and it's always too much. Yeah, I think it's better to and have. And then like half, and then I'm like 80% done with the tattoo and I realize I've only used half of it. So, so now I go on this uh, lotion frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> just, you're just fucking. Yeah, I'm like putting it on it their face and stuff. <laughs> they got like dry skin. Now place it on your bowels. Well, all right. What do you think about the color? The color is kind of gas for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to say cool. What do you say? No. They have a lot of colors. But yeah, they, the they make one. It's like a pastel pink. It's kind of nice. Yeah. It almost looks like Laffy Taffy. 
The it reminds you the, the smell shit. and the colors. See, I thought it was point. numbing stuff. Numb stuff. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was numb. Numb, numb, numb. I thought it was numb stuff. Like to start, and then I, um, upon further examination, realized it's not. Which means I'm more likely to use it because it's not numb. Correct. <laughs> I need to tell you about Allegory's new Ultra Black. This stuff is dark, maybe even darker than my childhood. It is amazing for lining, shading, and even blackouts. And I know a thing or two about black and out. You got to check this stuff out on allegoryinc.com. Use discount code unemployable for 20% off. Again, go to allegoryinc.com, check out their new ultra black, and use discount code unemployable for 20% off. Of you know what my move is? Like John, ask me if if like if, if, pretend I'm tattooing What's you. What's your move? And no, pretend I'm tattooing you and ask me to put if you get Ow, some numb stuff. Do you have any numb stuff? Yeah, just five more minutes. Okay. Five minutes later. Has it been five minutes? Um, yeah, but we're just gonna do a couple more lines and then we can we can use the, the numb. No, I get it, dude. I have a lot of tattoos, so I'm very familiar with it. You know, I've kind of like earned my stripes. But um, do you think like for the end we could numb? Yeah, we're well. Let me get to this next breaking point, and when we take a break, I'm gonna numb you, and then we'll. we'll, we'll no, totally, totally, dude. Like I've got a million tattoos. I'm not like that client. You, you know have what a I mean? Lot of but, tattoos. But you know, it is kind of like hurting, and I don't know. Like one of my boys said that they came here and they got numb stuff, and <laughs> I'm just at this point, I'm like, fuck it. Like, can we just use some of it? Yeah, like, all right, give me just one minute, and I'll grab some. Cool, cool, cool. So, like, what brand of, like, numb stuff do you use? You know, typically, we just use it's Bactine. This guy doesn't even know it's water. <laughs> <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I mean, it doesn't hurt, like, that bad, but, like, you know, getting older, it's like, I don't really want to deal with the pain anymore. Can you just hit me with some of that? Doesn't know it's water. <laughs> this didn't really help. <laughs> Yo, you just got to give it some time to like let it work. Dude, the pink, I love the pink, but because I'm getting old, the pink writing on the back is hard to read. <laughs> you might need glasses. No, no, no. <laughs> glasses are for weak people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it says like directions. Oh, it has directions. Store in a cool, dry place. Try with mouth first. <laughs> For artists, apply as the... Yeah, this is like hard to read. Maybe I do need glasses. Can you read that? Are you relapsing? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Are you going to eat a little bit? Where, where were you? Uh, directions. Put a little on the tongue, baby. Yeah, I thought you were going to eat a little bit. Yeah. For artists, apply as needed during the tattoo application. For aftercare... Apply thin coats as needed during their recovery. So it period. gives instructions. That's in case you're not sure what it is or how to use it. Don't use this for aftercare, though. Even though it says you can. You can use it for aftercare. Yeah, I, I really not. want them to taste it. I want to know if it tastes like bubble gum. Kai, give me a tongue depressor. Taste test. <laughs> it smells like it would taste great, but so do candles, and they don't. Yeah, you can't ever... Like, on the warnings, it doesn't say anything about digestion. This is just keep out of the eye. No, dude, if you can use it on an open wound, like a tattoo, it. you can eat it. Yeah. yeah. No, don't throw it, because if it hits the ground, you got to get another one. Break it. We're all going to try it. Why don't you break it? <laughs> three, right? Fuck it. Yeah, I guess. I'll try. I'll, I'll, I'll eat the tattoo goo. Splinter part. <sighs> I'll I'll do the serving size. It's for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> do you want oh, yours dude, that's on what, the? Get, uh, get a healthy serving, bro. <laughs> what is that? Oh, you're a fucking growing boy, dude. You love bubble gum, baby. On this episode of tattooers doing stuff they shouldn't, <laughs> bro. This is informative, dude. Like this is for the people. If they could smell this through the camera, like they would want to try it too. It reminds me of a, do a dental office. Too. You savage. Holy shit. Oh, it doesn't taste It doesn't anything. taste as bad as I thought. No, it, it really doesn't. I would actually eat more of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, it the texture is Jeff? Weird. Huh? I'm not can, into it, but uh, <laughs> I can say it's not as bad. I can internally smell it though. Bro, you didn't even eat your yeah, yeah, like fucking your loser. Gross. Yo, eat yo, the whole yo, thing. Yo, eat the whole <laughs> thing, bro. We licked ours clean. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Can't. Yeah. Damn, I just did. <laughs> 
Double tape. Stop. Like, oh. use your lips to scrape it that off. That's horrible. Put it to the, the root of your mouth. I'm so sorry, dude, about Cam. Dude, he played us. I ate it. Eat the stick. Bro, like, clean <laughs> it up, bro. That's so wasteful. I think, he, I think he should have to do something else for, for that. Yeah. You should probably have We should make him rehab. taste some allegory ink. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm always trying to drink that shit. I got mad pictures of me. All right, so taste test. Not bad, yeah. but not good. Gas or trash? Is there a mid? I'm going to say trash, dude. Yeah, trash like for not having I wouldn't eat it. On the reg, yeah. Like, yeah, it didn't yeah. taste good, so trash. Okay. If the taste matched up to the smell, maybe. Have you used it? I feel How like my breath pinkies? smells like... That smell. What's in the ingredients? Like bubblegum? I read it. It's like seed oil and like other shit. Semen. Safflower seed oil, beeswax. Yeah, I can taste the beeswax. I mean, I have used it. Five, it does five, get five, rid five. of redness, which is nice. So it has soothing aspects to this one? So does know. witch hazel. <laughs> right. But it is like a more expensive version of. S- do you um do you alcohol people before you put Sanoderm on? Uh, not really. Sometimes the outside of it, if it's like a weird spot, but not like the tattoo itself. But I'll. I always do. <laughs> listen, listen. Let me explain something to you. Guys. All right. There's very few moments in my life when I have power. Okay. Okay. So follow me here. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a couple scenarios. You're in the elevator. Someone is coming with the, to, to the elevator. They have like a b- bunch of bags or whatever. You get to decide whether or not you're going to hold that door for that person. That's a moment of power. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That you just smile. And yeah. Like you, you, can, you can, you know, typically I, I, I tend to lean towards the, 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 the good side of the force, but you know. Everyone has their days. Perfect. Yeah. Force closes so, shit right now. I'm, another Darth, one I'm Darth Vader, when, motherfucker. You know, this is my ultimate <laughs> favorite. Is when I'm in a parking lot, like a busy in a in a busy parking lot, and I'm in my car, and people are waiting for my space, and I have the car in reverse, but my foot is just on the brake. Oh, you know, yeah, what like I mean? you're just so, scrolling through. So your they're phone. like you waiting. For, yeah. They're just still just, scrolling through your they're phone. They're just waiting yeah. for me to pull out so they can have my spot. But like, <laughs> I'm putting on music. Like I'm, trying to, I'm trying to too. find yeah, a song. That's like, like that a power. moment of power. Yeah. And then another one is when I'm finished with a tattoo. And I get to alcohol it to clean it real good. Actually, I'm pretty sure from what I recall, at least it used to be that Sanoderm would recommend that you alcohol it and clean it. <laughs> no, I, I, a lot of people have talked about that. I think it actually is a good thing. It's just like I'll use other products that have a lower amount of alcohol in them as opposed to like straight out. You're such a sweetheart. Well, I just like, I think it's more of a convenience thing than like a sweet thing. Like I already have this product set up, you know. Like witch hazel or green soap or whatever. I don't know. It's very kind of you. I just spit on it. I'm like, you're done. <laughs> and then I walk away and Logan. They're Rack's always, not. and you know what's funny is when, when, whenever you alcohol someone, they're always like, oh, it's not that bad. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like the onset of like, yeah, it's Sting. like this onset. And then the best part is when they touch it or like they, like whatever, like they'll like touch it and like, and then I'm like, gotta do it again, man. <laughs> you touched it. You know what, like, this is what really happens. Is you put the alcohol on and then they go, what's that? Oh, yeah. And then by the time they're done with that sentence, they know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's pain. They're very dissatisfied. What were you going to say? Being like, it's like when you don't fan it. After. Like, are you a fanner or do you like wipe them and walk away? Fan it, dude. I don't well, even. What, your hand? Well, like. D- or do you get a paper towel? Well, like the same paper towel I wipe them or with. Or do you blow on it? Like. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> sanitary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then kiss it so it mm-hmm. heals faster. That's my favorite. You got to love it a little. Yeah, see Cam do that. And then he has like blood and ink all over it. It looks like blood ink lipstick. It's <laughs> yeah. super weird. Shows up under a black light. Yeah, but if I make any comments about it, he gets so salty. He's like, bro. You don't kiss like, your clients goodnight, He's bro. like, dude, I'm like cool with the jokes and I'm, I'm cool, man. I get it. But like, don't make my client feel weird that I kiss them, kiss their boo-boo. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'll let you have that one. Just Gotta learn to have something. Top tier service. Yeah. yeah. Michelin experience. Yeah. What's your overall thoughts on this product? I mean, I use it. They sent it to me and I, I was like, I smelled it. And I was like, this smells fucking great. That was like the whole selling point. The smell? 
I like, I like like how it fits in your hand. Like the you're product. reaching now. You're doing yeah. a lot. Like when no, I, this is the stuff that's important to me. So like if I had to throw things. this at something <laughs> or someone, like it's a good, it's throwable. Hold it. It is throwable. Like for sure, it's throwable. But yeah, I don't know when I when I look at like a a glide or an Oyman product, I, my first thing that like go to isn't can I throw this? So I find that. Interesting and inspiring that that's where you go. No, because you look at these product reviews and like people are going through the ingredients and like health benefits and blah, 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 blah. John's like, can I fucking throw it? <laughs> Bro, but it's like, that doesn't apply to me. Right. Maybe it applies to you. It doesn't apply to me. Right. Like, I'm like, oh, this smells good. This is fun. Do I hope this company The aesthetic is this, nice. And they're like, yo, they fucking ate that shit. Like, why did they eat they it? They sponsor me. They, they do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so they're, they're owned by Bishop. No, you, but if, it, if you you know what would make this product a, a a gas product if it tasted good. I'll be honest, and this is not a joke, and I've tasted a lot of ointments. That's the best tasting one. Yeah, but you're setting the bar low. What like you're setting the bar? They low. set the bar low. Yeah, they, they set didn't the bar. even factor taste in when they were creating. Well, that's what I'm saying. So imagine what if we pushed a company to develop like a, this is so safe you can eat it. Like it's so and safe. it tastes good. And it tastes good. Because, we, because yo, people, like, you Ad, make a claim a, like that, people are going to show up. They'll be like, oh, you can eat it? I'm going to eat this. Wow, they thought of everything. This shit tastes it's good. kind of smart. Then you start going through the product quicker. They buy more. See? That was good, Cam. That was, mm? that was yeah. good. Now I'm eating it, too. Yeah. yeah. Some for you, some for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, you're, like, sticking <laughs> your client's mouth at the end of the appointment. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cam, you fucked up. Yeah. And Jeff Thomas is never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Damn it. <laughs> fuck you. You can never go to his treatment center. <laughs> no matter how Boom. bad. Help is available for you, for you and anyone else. <laughs> That's right. Also, Kyla's taking a week off to go to Movie Mountains. <laughs> you were approved, baby girl. You have won a free trip <laughs> to <laughs> We were just talking about how I want to be giving away shit from the podcast. So maybe we should give away. Kyla. Kyla. <laughs> Maybe we should give away treatment to Kyla. Yeah. We'll you see. Don't though. even have to call your insurance. But keep your we eye out you. because we're definitely going to be giving away shit from the podcast. Well, maybe we'll make it games or lotteries or whatever, but stay tuned. Um, we'll give away cool shit like edible ink ease. I was about to say, maybe some pink <laughs> shit for people to eat at home. Maybe some <laughs> tattoo products, merch. Um, I'd like to give away machines, beds, ink. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Cam, close us out, baby. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode. Catch you next time. Of what? Catch you later, skater. Unemployable. Podcast. K podcast on YouTube. What do you have John to say Nelson. to everyone out there? Thank you to everyone who watches and supports us. We appreciate it. What about our Patreoners? Patreon. See us on Patreon next. Exclusive. Do you think I'm going to let you on the next Patreon episode? Probably not. After you didn't and welcome our guest? Welcome. Do you guys get naked on the Patreon? I mean, we can if you well, want. No, but I tell all the stories that I don't tell on here because I'm afraid that the channel Bishop will get and I have teamed up here. to give you guys a special offer of 10% yeah. off all products Good if time. you use discount code CAMSUCKS. It works.